Right, good afternoon um, and welcome to today's planning uh, committee meeting. My name is Councillor David Connor and I'm Chairman of the Planning Committee here at Fenland. I'd welcome those members of the public and the press in attendance and those who are watching via the live stream of this meeting via YouTube. Whilst this meeting is being held publicly, it is also being streamed via YouTube. Minutes of the meeting will be reduced in the usual way and the recording of the minutes will be available to view on YouTube and such times that the matters the minutes, sorry, are produced. Please be aware the, that the only audio from the microphones will be captured on the live stream. Therefore, those invited to speak need to ensure their microphones are on when speaking and are as close to you as possible. To enable this meeting to run in an orderly manner, can all present keep their microphones off except when invited to speak? Please ensure that the microphone is turned off when you finish speaking. I'd also ask everyone to ensure their mobiles are on silent or turned off for the duration of the meeting. Please be aware that the cameras will, will be on us at all time during the meeting. With regard to the meeting, I must ask members of the public to refrain from interrupting. The only members of the public allowed to speak are those who are registered to do so. Anyone who speaks must do so in a respectful and a polite manner. It is right there is meaningful discussions about the merits of any application, but we will not, or I will not, allow inappropriate language or personal attacks on councillors and their beliefs on members of the public or on officers' professional advice. So with that um, out of the way, we'll now go to agenda item one, and I would like to ask member services, have you any apologies for absence, please? Over to you, Elaine. Thank We've you. had apologies from councillors Cornwall and councillor Scolding, and councillor Clark is substituting for councillor Scolding. Yeah, thank you for that, that Councillor Clark, for attending this afternoon. If everybody's happy. Uh, no, hang on a moment. Councillor Sutton has got. Yeah, just one uh, little typo, Chairman, on page. I think it was 16. Um, I didn't make a note of it, so maybe page 16, um, I mentioned the uh, barrier works on the Neem and the Ooze, and it's noted in the minutes as on the Leem, L-E-A-M, it should be N-E-N-E, -E -N -E. and that's a point two on page 16. Thank you. Okay, so if we can just alter those, Elaine, when you've got the time. So with that in mind, bear in mind, Councillor Sutton's uh, Comments on that. Are we happy to sign those minutes off as a correct record? Yeah. So, have we got a proposal? It's Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Davis. Thank you very much for that. So we'll go on to three, um, which is now we'll go to agenda three, which is uh, urgent items. Of course, there are none as usual. Item number four is declarations of interest. The member services will now go to each councillor in turn. And can you please state if you have anything to declare in relation to anything on the agenda items here today? Thank you. So over to you, Elaine, please. Thank you. Councillor Benny. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, I do attend Chatteris Town Council, but was not present when these were discussed. And I had no part of the voting or comment or commented on either of the applications that are here before that today. And item five, I have received an email lobbying me, but I haven't responded to it. And uh, that is it today. Councillor Connor. Yes, quite a lot. I've been lobbied on application item number five and number 12. Okay. Agenda item 13, I did not part, take part in any of the discussion or indeed voting when the application came to committee last year. I was lobbied on the application by the applicant's father, I do believe, and the in, in, in the event of openness and transparency, I, as I said before earlier, I didn't vote or, or, or take part in the discussion. But a different application, I've not been lobbied on this application, so I feel that I can take part in this discussion and indeed voting with an open mind and will vote accordingly when the speakers and the debate has finished. Um, this has been agreed by Mr. Turnbull. His solicitor is on present today. I'm sure you'll agree. So I will be taking part in the voting and the discussion of the voting on that. Item number 10, 12 and 14, it's been judged harshly, I do believe. I've been predetermined on the above applications. As I am chairman, 
and called these applications to the planning committee um, this afternoon, uh, which is I absolutely refute that I'm uh, prejudged at all on the news, but um, I would take over, Councillor Davis will take over the chairmanship of those particular items, but I will sit in the chair and listen, but no take no part in honestly discussions or voting. But I do feel harshly, and if anybody wants to make any comments on that before we move on, um, I, I, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Councillor French, then Councillor uh, Bennett. Uh, thank you, Jim, and yes, I will certainly do. Can I have a further explanation why um, you uh, officers believe that you are already predetermined? Um, my understanding that um, when you decide to bring something um, to the planning committee, you make a recommendation and the head of planning, Nick uh, Harding, actually makes that decision. You don't make that decision, so I cannot see why you're predetermined. And if that is um, how this is going to pan out, we will take that um, authority away from you and Nick Harding and give it to Council Law, who is a portfolio holder for planning, and she can make the determination. Uh, because we're not having this, that you have to sit back and not um, vote or take part in planning applications. That's what you're there for. Yeah, my thoughts entirely, Councillor uh, French. Councillor Benny, you've indicated that uh, you want to speak. Yeah, um, very similar to Councillor French. When this method of bringing um, applications to the planning committee was discussed previously, it was decided that you would decide what is in, in conjunction with uh, portfolio recommend the uh, portfolio holder to, and the, the decision making was left to you to deal with um it is down to the committee to, to determine this you are part of that committee and to take you away from this committee as chairman i think is wrong i think also that um you know people pay good money and they pay a lot of money in cases for planning applications to be heard and if this is the process that is in place for these applications to be heard in a fair, open and democratic way, this is part of that process. This is impeding that process and I think it is wrong. I think you should be able to, to, to be on this. And if we're looking at terms of uh, predetermination, everybody who sits on this planning committee, we start with an open mind. But by the time we've read these reports, we have all got an opinion of some sort that can be swayed at this committee, that can be changed at this committee, and that does happen. But you, everybody, by the time they've read these applications, we come here with an open mind to listen to what everybody else has to say, and the officers, and the members. But there is a part of that is determined by what we read in those reports. And that is the democratic process that brings these applications through. And I think we owe this to the people who pay very good money to have this planning applications looked at by the planning department and overseen by the planning committee to have that taken away as an infringement of a democratic right that I think is wrong. For being in Council Davis, I'd like to explain. Um, I've been doing these call-ins, these refusal call-ins, as everyone knows on this planning committee, and um, an agents obviously know as well, uh, for now 25 months, I would think, over two years. And it's only, and I used to use openness and transparency, which we all adhere to those all adhere to those or that is a part of the planning committee um uh, uh, what what should happen and i hope everybody's in agreement with that it is only in the last three three months the terms of me calling these in uh, has been uh, altered significantly so i've had to put down reasons why they should become to committee, why they should come to committee, not my personal thoughts, but why they should come to committee for you guys to decide whether I'm whether it's it was approved or refused. I'm not bothered which which way any of you do it, but all I want is to be in a democratic, proper, professional way. And that's and, and with that, I've had, Sorry, Mr. Chairman, could we have an explanation from our solicitor before we go any further? I, I think we need some legal advice here. Oh, oh okay, wh whatever. Either get Nick or the solicitor to reply to yours and mine and Councillor Benny's comments. So, Councillor Davis, please. My view um, and the way I look at it is. The, the process was brought in for the chairman of planning committee to be able to call in applications that were up for refusal. 
And when you call them in, you're not calling them in as councillor David Connor, you're calling them in as the chair of the planning committee so that you may get the wider view of the members of the committee. And, and um, I, I don't see how that should then make you predetermined. Okay, so anybody else got any other comments? Councillor Benny again, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, I remember when this was brought in and we were looking to change the constitution so this could be done. And this was an agreement that was made between the head of planning and members. Uh, I can't remember who made it, where the decision was made, but it was agreed that we would, um, if this was the method and process of bringing applications to this committee, um, and the chairman, the head of planning, Nick, agreed that he would allow those to be brought forward, um, then we wouldn't change the constitution. And I think this puts us in a position where, as, as, a, as a member of led council, we will have to look at changing the changing the constitution again, because this is, in my opinion, is not fair on the people we're supposed to represent. They need a fair and they need a, 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 the, the full service that is available to them. And this service has been running and it's been running very well for many years or several years, not for years and to take this away and to take your vote away from this as a committee member as a chairman you're calling this in but as, as, a, as a committee member you have a vote on this and i don't think that's right okay thanks for that council benny has anybody else got any things uh councillor sutton yeah thank you tim um i don't 100 percent agree with uh, other speakers i think when you call them in and you give the reasons uh, open transparency is a lot different to when you call them in and give a specific reason for calling them in. And I think you leave yourself open to challenge. And I also think you leave this committee open to challenge and thus the council open to challenge. So I think the, the advice you're being given is good advice. And if I was in your position, I would be taking it. Thank you. I would like to reply to that. As I, as I, as I reiterate again, that for, for, 20, for 20 months, it was open and transparent. And I didn't give any reason why they should be called in or not. Only openness and transparency. In the last three to four months, that has changed significantly. Open and transparency is what we all want to see on this planning committee. Not And I was asked to give a reasons why they should come to a committee against officer recommendation. It's not that what I wanted to do, Councillor Sutton, it's what I have to do, what I, I was asked to do to bring fairness and openness, as Councillor Benny said, for the residents of, of, of Finland. As, he, as Councillor Benny rightly said, they're paying a lot of money for, the, for, for, for getting planning, uh, getting planning come to this committee and they should get their full pound of flesh either way. So, can we have some legal advice, please? Yeah, so I was going to say either Stephen or Nick um, can come in. I'll go first, Chairman. <clears throat> the Constitution was specifically altered uh, at full council in order to facilitate this arrangement whereby uh, applications recommended for refusal under delegated powers went through a consultation process with the chairman and the constitution sets out that in the response uh, the chairman must give a planning reason why um, the application um, is being requested of me to be considered for um, presentation to planning committee. Um, as I've openly said to um, the chairman on a number of occasions, um, quite rightly I can be criticised in that we were not carrying out the responsibility, this is me personally, not carrying out the responsibility in respect of um, the proper consideration of the responses from the chairman. So the chairman uh, often used the phrase openness and transparency, uh, and I was accepting that without question. As a consequence of a number of um, customer complaints, I think uh, I've reflected on 
what I'm doing and its compatibility with the Constitution. And therefore, um, we have pushed back to the chairman where the phrase openness and transparency has been used and no other explanation given. So I have given the chairman an opportunity to explain where the issue of openness and transparency lies, because that can legitimately be um, a planning reason. But if I don't know where the issue of openness and transparency lies, I, on what basis am I making a decision over whether or not to allow a, an application to come to planning committee or not? And in the event of a complaint saying, what was the issue? I'm none the wiser. So we have given the chairman where reference has been made to openness and transparency, the opportunity to uh, flesh out um, the background to that so I can make an appropriate decision. So um, putting openness and transparency as a reason to one side for a moment, um, the constitution asks for a planning reason, and as I mentioned, openness and transparency can potentially be one, but it, it, in what most people would consider uh, a planning reason, uh, the chairman um, can give a planning reason in using words in a way that don't identify uh, what his personal opinion is on that application. As soon as a personal opinion is expressed in that reason, so I believe the planning permission should be given for X because of A, B, and C, then as you can see, that's virtually the same as a ward councillor um, who sits on planning committee responding to uh, an everyday um, planning consultation from my team. And that's why uh, we've given the advice that we have to the chairman in relation to, for example, the meeting today. The decision of whether or not the chairman wishes to accept that advice is entirely up to the chairman. It's up to each individual uh, member of the planning committee to decide whether or not they wish or, or don't wish to follow the advice that's provided by the solicitor. Um, Stephen, is there anything that you'd Thank you. like to add? Thank you, Nick, for that, Stephen. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to just to sort of stand back a bit from this, one of the main principles of probity in planning is that the developers and the stakeholders and the broader public can be reassured that members, when they come to the planning committee, approach applications with a genuinely open mind. Now, it may be that individual members in their own heads don't have an open mind. We can't do anything about that. But we have to make sure that watching members of the public know that their applications and applicants know their own applications will be dealt with impartially with members who have not made up their minds before they come to committee, hear the debate, hear the uh, representations from the public and from others and advice from officers, and then make their decision. That's the correct way for it to happen. If, I'm drawn, if my attention is drawn to uh, a member who said in advance of a committee meeting, words to the effect of, I don't like this application, or I do like this application for whatever reason, my duty to say to that member, you are predetermined. If you go ahead and vote, if a member of the public observes what's going on, they may well conclude this committee has already made its mind up. It's, 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 what's the point in having a planning committee, they might say, if members have already decided which way they are going to vote. So the proper advice that I have to give the chairman or anybody else, any other member, is that you can express your views in whatever way you wish, no problem with that. But if you are sitting, determining a planning application, you cannot, in the run-up to that application, express views to, which demonstrate that you've already made up your mind. That's the principle at stake, and we can't get around that principle. It is, is embedded in the local government advice, in the legal framework under which we all operate. So hence the constitution requires the chairman to give planning reasons. If those planning reasons involve an opinion on the merits of an application one way or the other, then the right approach for me is to say to the chairman, you can't take part in that debate in order to reassure the public and other stakeholders that you have not already made up your mind. So that's, that's the principle we're operating under. So, Councillor Marks. So, uh, on the so basically, a board councillor, somebody appointed to me, say, let's take a problem planning. I would agree with the chair, 
and say, Great works for this people, they can do it. Uh, you know, give you a reason. He then put the reason in the kingdom of Christ, and then he's not saved by our faith. And then he was joined to help him to bring death if he if literally something he can think of himself that it's accidentally complaining against as opposed to chair. This is this can't happen. No, I think it's the chair in that situation, the chairman simply verbatim reports to the planning officer that this individual has expressed views. That's not the chairman expressing a view, he's just passing that on to the planning officer and saying to the planning officer, can, can this be called in? Because this individual has expressed these views. The, what needs to be avoided is the planning officer, the member, introducing his own opinions in advance of the planning committee. Well, of course, because they write the reports. Because you make the decisions. That's the important thing. It's like a, not the same as the courts, but it's it's like turning up before a judge and the judge has said the day before, I think this thing should be dismissed or allowed or whatever. You shouldn't be expressing any view. Right. So I'm going to sum up here. I'm, I'm going to sum up here if anybody else hasn't got anything to say. You have got something to say, Councillor. Yeah, I, I would, I, I'd like to hear your sum up first before I comment. Okay, so, well, there's three items there that, I, that I've made some sort of comment on uh, to bring this to committee from an officer refusal, okay? This is not, we're not going to get to the bottom of this on this planning meeting whatsoever. Councillor Benny, Councillor French has said they may want to change the constitution. I may have to, if that's not going to take place, I might have to uh, get some advice from the solicitor on what to say if it needs to get called into planning committee. That doesn't implicate me uh, thinking I'm pre, uh, predetermined, and I shall certainly do that for next time. But I'm, I'm, I am, I am going to take, this time, I am going to take officer advice and I will hand over to Councillor Davis, who's my vice chair on my left hand side, to chair those three meetings. But we certainly will not be going through this again. Thank you. It's a French. Um, thank you. I think until <clears throat> I think you said three months ago, everything was working what, uh, fine what was your open, transparent, etc. And this has changed. I believe the, the change in this is now put undue pressure on you. Um, as Deputy Leader of the Council, I am going to recommend to the Leader of this Council that the Constitution will, will be changed and the portfolio holder for planning will make that decision and take the burden off you. And I'll be doing that immediately after this meeting. Yeah, I'm more than I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy, uh, Councillor French, to that because it is it does take a lot of my time up um, going to see these delegation refusals, and I don't. And I, I like to tell anybody that I do not get any monies, petrol allowances, petrol, diesel, or anything for doing so. That is purely out of my own pocket. So I'm not unhappy with a suggestion you're making, Councillor French. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, uh, councillors. Would you like to carry on with the delegations of interest? Thank you. Mrs. Davis, nothing that's pertinent to this agenda, thank you. Mrs. French. Uh, I'm a member of March Town Council, but take no part in any applications. Marks, Councillor Marks. Councillor Mrs. Mayor, nothing, thank you. Councillor Murphy. Yes, I attend Chapters Town Council, would take no part in the plan matters. But now on agenda item number 14, F stroke YR22 stroke 0217 stroke LB, I will be addressing this committee as a local councillor from the floor, but I am not able to vote on this item afterwards. Thank you. All debate. Councillor Purser. Yes, I'm a member of March Town Council, but uh, I do not make any uh, take part in any planning applications. I was also lobbied on item number five, but I did not reply. Councillor Sutton. Uh. 
Councillor Topgood? Nothing would be clear. Councillor Clark? Nothing. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that I've also been lobbied on agenda items 5 and 12. So, Elaine, you kindly make a note of uh, Councillor Davis's comments. So, now we'll go to the really exciting part. We'll go to the main part of the meeting, the planning applications, to remind members of proposal to grant or refuse an application. Don't be made when you... by the planning reasons for doing so. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Nikki Carter. She's the Senior Development Officer here at Fenland to present application F stroke YR22 stroke 0381F, agenda item number five. So Nikki, when you're ready, please. Thank you. May I just check, is Mr. Salter in the room at all? No, no, no. thank you. Thank you, Chair. Firstly, could I please draw members' attention to an update report which has been circulated. Agenda item five is a full application for 22 dwellings and associated works, including alterations for site levels. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and to the centre of the aerial photograph. It is located on the western side of West Street and is accessed via a byway which links West Street and Blackmill Road. The current access road is narrow, not in the best state of repair, and partially unmade. The site consists of three large commercial type buildings, in front of which is a hard standing. The remainder of the site is open land. The eastern side of the site is located in flood zone one, sloping west into flood zones two and three. The site layout can be seen on this plan. The dwellings are located to the east of the site, an open space incorporating attenuation ponds to the west. These slides show proposed street scenes. The top drawing details the development in relation to the existing single storey dwelling at 88 West Street. Further street scenes can be seen here, also indicating the change in ground level. Photo one shows the existing commercial buildings and hard standing. Photo two, the site viewed from the east looking towards Little Acre Fen Grove. Photo three, the junction of the byway and footpath. And photo four, the site viewed from Little Acre Fen Grove to the south. Photo five looks towards 88 West Street from the access. Photo six shows the site to the right hand side in relation to the garden serving number 88 on the left. For photo seven, the access road in relation to the rear boundaries of the Fairview Avenue properties. The top photos show West Street as existing with vegetation and trees along the eastern side. The lower photograph shows the byway leading to Blackmill Road. There are no significant issues in relation to flood risk, drainage, of the wider site or ecology subject to conditions. However, the site marks the transition between town and countryside, and the dense estate type development is not considered to respect the rural form and character of this area, and will result in an in depth encroachment into the open countryside, resulting in a significant detrimental impact. Insufficient information has been submitted to enable the impact of the proposal on the residential amenity of 88 West Street to be fully assessed. Uh, the scheme put forward in respect of the West Street upgrade cannot be feasibly de delivered and it has not been demonstrated that a well-designed, safe and sustainable access can be achieved. As such, it is recommended to refuse this application as set out on page 64 of the agenda. Yep, thank you Nikki. We have one speaker on this application. I would like to invite Kate Wood. She's the agent to make her presentation to the committee. When you're nicely seated, you've got five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, members. I'm the agent for the planning application for this development of 22 houses on this partly brownfield site, 
immediately adjacent to the edge of the town of Chatteris. The proposed development will facilitate the removal and remediation of this noisy engineering company on the site, which is in the process of moving to another location in Chatteris. You will be aware that the emerging local plan proposes the allocation of 45 hectares of land for employment purposes in Chatteris, so there'll be no loss of jobs as a result of this development. In fact, it will enable the business to build new premises to replace the existing poor quality buildings on the site, which those of you which have seen the site will appreciate has as, um, partly constructed with asbestos. The development will also result in road improvements in West Street. Members will have seen on site that West Street is a well used route towards the Pocket Park, especially with dogs. The application scheme includes the provision of public open space, which will result in a more pleasant walking route that will be better overlooked and thus safer. The proposed development will result in the provision of much needed affordable housing, six units, which will be able to be provided more quickly than waiting for larger housing schemes to come forward, especially as this is a full application. The council is looking to allocate significant areas of land in this locality for housing development in the next local plan. So this would not represent an undue encroachment into the countryside. The proposed site allocations in the local plan include over 200 houses to the southeast of this site, accessed from Black Mill Road, London Road and Fairbairn Way. Our 22 houses will contribute quickly to the sustainable growth of the town and provision of choice. The refusal reasons were addressed in my email to you all on Monday, but in summary, the development will be in character with the area because it will introduce residential use within residential surroundings rather than continuing the industrial use. This locality is evolving into a larger residential location and the development will provide a pleasant area of open space that will form a transition between built development and the countryside beyond. Regarding reason two, the amenity of 88 West Street will be improved through the removal of the industrial use and the provision of new boundary treatment. The nearest house will be five metres, a car length, from that adjacent bungalow at its closest point. The nearest part of the house on plot one will be a single storey garage, which can be further reduced in height if members prefer. There will be no windows facing that bungalow. Regarding condition three, highways, the highway officer was satisfied that his requirements could be overcome by conditions. We have already liaised directly with him regarding slight amendments to those plans, which he has confirmed would be acceptable. So we would anticipate that planning conditions requiring the submission of these plans formally for approval, along with a condition regarding the consequential minor changes to the road drainage scheme, should be workable. Thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to answer any queries. Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. Members, questions, clarifications, please. Councillor Sutton and Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, Miss, Mrs. Wood, whatever, Miss Wood. Um, how does you, you, you lobby this all right on? Yeah, well, you did lobby this. Um, with this new road layout, how does that differ from the one it supersedes? Because I couldn't see too much difference. Thank you, through you, Chairman, neither could I. Um, so, <laughs> which, uh, which makes my point. Um, there are minor changes um, about the way that the footway comes down the road. It was going to be on the as you look at it with north upwards, it would be on the west hand, the west side, the left. Um, and the highway officer thought that it needed to be on the on the right, as you look at it, um, because of changes in levels, it sort of slopes down towards the west. So because of that, um, he suggested that it everything shuffle around a bit, but it's within the same area and within highway land. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Benny. Yeah. Um, I mean, my question is, how close are you to having a, an agreement with the upgrade of this road? And there's also land issue, ownership in, issues in here, which should not be a planning consideration anyway. Um, but in terms of having a, a, a workable uh, access committed to this development. Well, the access is part of the planning application. Um, 
the applicant um, is in the process of purchasing the sites from the current landowners uh, who own most of the site. Then part of the site is highway land, so highway routes are paramount. Um, there is a small part at the southern end of the site, um, which is sort of unknown below ground ownership, which is why we served certificate B, um, sorry, certificate C, uh, which is where you have to put a notice in the newspaper to say if anybody claims this land, etc. cetera. Um, but the, it is possible to, um, to carry out the improvement works with um, an associated section 278 agreement, which is a highway agreement um, to make sure that that occurs. Thank you. Uh, anyone else got any questions before I come in? I'll count some French. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I noticed on 9.41 that you're offering 25% affordable housing, um, which seems generous. Uh, but, you know, we, we have been down this line before being promised 25%. Um, and once um, applicants get to planning permissions, uh, they go and have a viability study done, and then we end up with nothing. What is the likelihood of a viability study going to be done? None, because um, the applicant has agreed to buy the land. It's in the process of being purchased now. He has done his due diligence to make sure that he can afford to buy the land with the constraints on it, one of which is the requirement for the provision of affordable housing. Others are, for example, the demolition of the buildings, the remediation of the site, getting rid of the asbestos, that kind of thing. Um, so affordable <laughs> housing is one aspect of that, um, but he's done the maths, as it were, and um, you, and you know, and as far as we're concerned, that affordable housing will be provided. Now, I would reassure you that if you, if there was a situation where, for some reason, affordable housing wasn't wanted, that would have to be a whole new planning application, and it would come back to you again for your consideration. And actually, that, that would be the, the affordable would be secured through the Section 106 agreement anyway. Uh, thank you. That seems very generous. Bidding in mind, looking at education, you're also offering £260,000 for education. I just wonder how that whole site is going to be by if you've got planning permission. Yeah. Um, yeah, Councillor French has stolen my thunder on this one. But. Um, as I always look at viability, because I'm always, I'm like Councillor French, it does come back here many, many times when we're promised the world and we don't even get a kitchen sink out of it. So I'm really, really pleased that uh, the agent has addressed my fears and obviously Councillor French's as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, question to me. Um, looking at the access to this site, um, there are certainly issues. Is this something that can be overcome? Is this something that can be dealt with by way of condition on this to bring this application forward? Or is this something that we cannot do as members? Through you, Chairman. <laughs> um, to the best of my knowledge, um, the agent has had an exchange with County Highways. I'm not aware whether or not that highway officer has merely looked at the plans in, in providing the response to the agent or whether or not um, there has been the benefit of a physical site visit as well as um, looking at the drawings. So um, in the absence of that knowledge, I would not rely purely on a condition because otherwise we are an effective effectively um, agreeing to the principle of that highway improvement, but in a way to which we're blind as to what the, the impact 
um, may be in relation to any constraints that there may be. So there are, for example, um, trees down that right hand side that's thick with vegetation. I don't know whether or not there's um, any ditches there or anything like that. And I'm not saying that to sort of scaremonger, that's just the practicalities of, of, of what may, may lay there. Um, I, I physically don't know. So I would um, not recommend reliance on a condition to resolve that problem until um, we've got some um, written uh, evidence that says that it, it really is feasible. Um, so that's sort of point one. Point two is the issue that uh, obviously a drawing would have to be submitted by the applicant. That would have to be subject to public consultation and there may be representations that we receive uh, that object to um, the footway on that particular side of the road. Um, so in that situation, um, the application would potentially be brought back to committee for determination again. Thank you very much. Yep, Councillor Davis, please. Um, just, I've got two um, questions to raise. One is um, about the, 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 they say they can't determine the width of the footpath. So is that going to have an impact on, on the, you know, what they're allowed to do? Uh, to you, Chairman, again, um, a 1.8 metre footway um, is currently proposed, but I'll, I'll describe it as being on the wrong side of the road currently and, and not achievable. So uh, as the agents alluded to, they've had a conversation with County Highways about putting it on the other side of the road um, and uh, exactly what width is achievable and whether or not that given constraints that may be uh, come across during any survey work that hasn't been done already may mean that a 1.8 metre footway isn't achievable. Okay, second question, thank you. Yeah, the, the second one relates to the um, drainage. Um, and it says, um, and the officer says, I can't object on this base, which then the applicant may be stunned later if they don't consider this now as an acceptable solution. This is talking about the, um, a, the access road appears to be on the existing road serving houses already built in that area. Therefore, it is assumed that the drainage system for this area remains unchanged. The assumption is correct. The existing highway drains over edge, i.e. water runs off the carriageway into the adjacent soft verge. By including a footway on one side with a curb upstand, the ability for over edge drainage is removed and the impermeable area increases. The applicant would therefore need to provide a means of drainage for the existing highway during any section 278 application. And um, I mean, that office is stating that she thinks more or less she says she doesn't think it's going to work. Um, well, the, the 278 process is completely separate to planning. And the way that it generally works is that you have what I'll call a a uh, planning highways drawing and the officer at highways will consider whether or not um, that highway improvement is achievable within the land available mm -hmm. within the public highway. There are always going to be um, technical elements which will be dealt with down the line through the section 278 process, detailed design matters, um, which um, planning isn't privileged and is legally separate. Um, but as part of any um, submission of additional um, highway details to flip path onto the other side of the road, um, the highways team at the county council would have to be satisfied that the principle of being able to drain um, that road it, it is going to be achievable or else you get a bit unstuck because you've agreed to the principle of that highway improvement but without being able to resolve the technical yeah. issues. Thank you. Apologies. Uh, 
So that's the two questions, Councillor Davies. So any more questions to officers? Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, just before I start with the questions, I'd just like to go back to the declarations of interest. Um, Council Mrs. French said that she hasn't been lobbied. I was going to say <coughs> the, <coughs> the only person on the committee is Councillor Clark that, that wasn't on the submission list. So just thought I'd bring that to try to cover you back. Um, so the question to officers is, um, we're talking about elsewhere and, and, and out in the countryside. How, in your view, is this any different to Wound Farm and Sutton Road, Wisbeach, which was agreed under the um, unallocated land policy? So how is that, or those two, or any other unallocated land policy, different to this one? Um, through you, Chen, um, as far as I recall, one farm uh, was allocated for employment use and was subsequently changed to um, residential use given the lack of interest for employment development. When it comes to development on the edge of uh, settlements, um, planning officers have to make a careful judgment. There is a degree of subjectivity. Um, to that judgment, and I can well understand um, situations within which uh, members may reach uh, a different decision uh, to the one that uh, we've made. Um, so the three reasons for refusal um, that are before committee today relate to um, the design character of the proposed development. You know, we consider it um, too urban in character and needs to be perhaps a, a, a lower density design. Secondly, um, the potential impact on number 88. And thirdly, this issue of the uh, provision of a, a, a footway uh, within the public highway. So those are the three reasons for refusal, Chairman. Does that address your concerns, Councillor Sutton? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Without further ado, I'll open it up for debate. Who would like to kick this off? Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I'm of the opinion that this is uh, just perhaps a, a, a one committee a month too early. Um, there seems to be issues around the roads and we're being told one thing by one person, one thing by another. Um, it would be much easier to make a decision if we've got some absolute concrete evidence that that can or can't be delivered. So I know members, and, and I personally don't like deferrals, but um, in terms of where it is, I personally can't see any different uh, to this scheme to, shall we say, Worm Farm or, or March North, what was that, the bottom of... Um, you think about berry fields? Yeah, berry fields, yeah. Um, they, they, they're all um, unallocated land, and, and, and thank the Lord we've got some unallocated land, otherwise we'd be in serious trouble. Um, I don't have any problem with it from that point of view. Um, the, the positives are, of course, um, the affordable housing. You know, we, we, we all sit around here at, aghast sometimes that you know we, we we get these developments come through and uh you know through the legislation of central government it, we have no choice but to pass them with with no social housing so that has to be a, a a real positive um the contribution to education of course is to be welcomed but how how can we how can we pass this today um, given that we're not sure um, on highways, so my preferred option today, Chairman, would be to defer to get some clarification both for ourselves and officers as to whether 
the highways as suggested can or can't be delivered. Thank you. Yeah, it's an option. Councillor French, please. Um, yes, thank you. I'm um, sorry. I, I thank Councillor Sutton for bringing it. I was remiss. Um, this was stuck in the middle of my papers, which I hadn't the time to read. Um, so yes, I have been robbed, even though I've just seen it. But I'd like to point out, I'm a commissioner for middle levels on six drainage boards, but not, and it is mentioned on this, this is War Boys in Somerton. Um, so just say, I am a commissioner, but, but not on there. Um, but, yeah, I do agree with Councillor Sutton. Um, I think the affordable housing, the contribution to education would be welcomed. Um, but I also <clears throat> agree that we need to get this access and highway sorted out. Um, and I, I don't particularly like um, deferring things, but I, I think Councillor Sutton's right in this. Yeah, I'm getting a little steer where this is going. Uh, we're still in debate, if anybody would like to add to it. No? I'm giving you another, anybody another 20 seconds. Oh, sorry, Nick. Yeah. Uh, no apologies from me, Chairman. I'm probably jumping the gun. Uh, you're yeah. probably going to come to the officers in a second. Uh, but having listened to the debate, and, and you know, it's given a clue as to, to so where going. Um, mm. a proposal might come. But just to um, uh, reiterate that you've got three reasons for refusal uh, before you. And if you're going to um, propose a, a deferral, um, then the understanding is that you're happy with the proposal in every respect other than the matter to which you're suggesting there should be a deferral. So, for example, we've got um, three reasons for refusal. Uh, the first one relates to um, what I'll loosely call the urban nature of the um, design of the development. Um, then. Uh, you've got the impact on number 88. So you've got to satisfy yourselves that you're you're happy with those two matters. And then when it comes to uh, the final matter in relation to the uh, improvement of the byway, then the, the deferral would say that um, you wish to see um, greater detail and the highway's response in relation to um, the detailed design of that um, improvement proposal. Thank yeah, you, I Chairman. think you've summed that quite nicely, Nick, to be honest. But we're still in debate. Um, anybody else want to add to it at all? I'm a councillor of the actual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an extremely good one, perhaps. Uh, councillor Benny, I thought you, you'd um, like to add to this, so please do. The floor's yours. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I mean, here's my area, local chatteris person. Um, I, I agree. This The, the development there has been a further developments all the way along west street they haven't been built out yet but there are other developments along west street and this is just a continuation in part as a chatteris town council this actually links to the pocket park which chatteris town council has been working mm -hmm. on as open space um so if this development went ahead that would improve the access to there um but i don't feel that i could pass this today with the access not being sorted out this 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 access is mm -hmm. Is, is the sticking mm -hmm. part. Um, as for in building out in the open countryside, um, I looked some time ago at, about you know, additional car parking in Chatteris to, to find somewhere to put somewhere that we could put some extra car parking in to make the you know the, the town centre a little bit more vibrant. And there just isn't anywhere. There is nowhere um, within the town boundary that you could put 27 houses. There just isn't isn't the land available for that. So Chatteris is earmarked as a growth village or Gareth town and Chatteris does need to grow. We've got supermarkets there that are hanging on. We need houses. If we lose the supermarket because we haven't got enough people living there, well, the councils will be absolutely and rightly ripped to bits. So I think the need for housing um, is there. You know, we've got local residents where your children and grandchildren live if we don't build housing. But I don't think on this occasion that the access, it, it's got to be committed at this stage. We can't pass this without. And if this can be done by way of deferral, where reason one and two are uh, satisfied that we as a committee are happy with the principle of development on that site, but on the, in reason three, where the access is not sorted out, but that could be deferred on access only to enable this work to be done, 
And if it can, then the development will go ahead. And if that access can't be agreed, then that won't go anyway. Won't go anyway because it won't be, be passed. I think that is a, a fair way to look at this. And I really don't see that there is any other 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 way. I think councillors certainly suggested a deferral, which I'm I'm happy with. Um, you know, we had Mr. Salisbury's application, which is the other end of Blackmill Drove, and that was refused on access for the same problem because the access needed sorting out and we refused it, but only on that. So once those accesses are sorted, then it should be able to be, be passed. So I would be, if it could be done by way of deferral rather than a refusal, I would be happy if it, if it is close to being uh, a scheme that is acceptable is close. If it was a long way away or there were serious problems, I think we'd like to see that. We, we need to see those um, schemes before we can commit. And another thing, um, to help with 88 West Street. I think that the uh, Miss Woods did say that they would reduce the height of the garage, which would improve the outlook for, there was a conservatory there. I mean, there wasn't a particularly nice outlook of a caravan and a load of old sheds outside there, but I think we should do what we can to try and alleviate some of the, the visual impact to number 88. And I think by lowering the height of that building, will it certainly allow more light into that, that building. And I think that's something that should be taken into consideration and I'd like to see that amendment made in the plans when they come back to us. Council, thank you, Councillor. Any Councillor French? Thank you. Um, I, I totally agree. But what also, um, if this application does come back to us, I would like to see a management plan because I'm fed up to the back teeth over the last few months <laughs> getting phone calls um, about dust, noise, disturbance. Uh, we've got two sites in March and to be honest, I'm fed up with it. So, you know, I think we need to look at the people who already live in these places, you know, and not to make their, their life unbearable, which it has been over the last few months or two sites in March. Councillor French, I do have to protest. You do keep reading my mind, and this is, this is very dangerous. <laughs> but I do echo, seriously, I do echo your sympathy uh, because, that, as I said in the last meeting, that did happen at the Taylor Wimpy site in uh, Whittlesea, where I had no end of complaints, and I suppose local councillors did as well. So, um, yeah, so I absolutely echo your sentiments there, but we're still in debate. Um, I think we've heard what the local member says, which I think maybe we should take on board. We've heard what Councillor Sutton says. We've heard what Councillor French says. And I do get a steer of where this is going. Um, if members are minded to agree to one and two, but defer it on access. I'm happy for that to happen. Um, but I'll obviously be guided by the rest of the committee. And if not, please go ahead and make your proposal, whoever's going to do it. So that's me finished. So I don't, is there anything else to debate wise? No, I'm going to close the debate then. So I'm looking for a proposer. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, I would like to propose we defer this application, Chairman, um, and based on the road issues only, um, as Nick pointed out, the uh, the unallocated sites is very uh, subjective, um, and, and I don't see personally any difference between this particular site and many, many other sites around, you know, that we've had come through on the unallocated policy. So, um, that's my proposal. Just bring it back on 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 road road area issues only. Okay, so we've got a proposal from Councillor Sutton to defer this application on highway issues only. Have I got a seconder, Councillor Benny? So all those in favour of deferring this application on just highway issues only, please raise your hands. Sorry. Just before, just I would like to reiterate um, Councillor Benny's comments about the uh, dwelling adjacent to number 88. I think there's a lot can be done with that. Okay. My preference would be to go to one and a half stories so you get a, a gradual build up, um, but something to, to the garage roof, as Miss Wood um, indicated, um, you know, should be taken on board. Thank you. Well, Councillor Sutton, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm sure we can allow let officers look at that. And I'm quite happy for officers to negotiate with a developer agent for that to happen. 
which you rightly say, and, and, and Councillor Benny said. So I'm sure uh, um, Nick's happy with that, or David, will, in his absence of dealing with that. Chairman, no. No, technically speaking, Chairman, if I may, um, oh. the committee can't impose, so to speak, a revision to the scheme. Um, so you know, that has to be, that has to fall away, but I'm sure the agent has been here today yeah. and well, it's an informative. noted. We'll do it as an informative then, shall we? As a... Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Right, yeah, so the agent definitely has taken, I should think she's taken a, a, a thought of that. So, right, so we'll now go to the vote on that proposal then. To defer that on highway issues only, just to reiterate, that looks as though that's unanimous to me. So that application has been deferred. Thank you. Item number six, I'll hand over to Nikki again to present her item agenda six, F stroke YR 220731 F. So Nikki again, please, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Agenda item six, the double application for a two-story five-bed dwelling with detached garage and the temporary siting of a caravan during construction. Planning permission has previously been granted for a similar scheme in April this year, and the current application seeks to amend the overall design and increase the ridge height from 8.7 metres to 9.1 metres. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photograph. It's located on the northern side of High Road, Wisbech St Mary, and is currently an area of vacant land. To the west is a modest two-storey dwelling, and to the east, further vacant land with planning permission for a dwelling. The proposed layout can be seen on this plan. The dwelling is located towards the front of the site behind the gravel parking and turning area and to the rear of the site is a detached garage with store above and hobby rooms. The floor plans and elevations for the dwelling can be seen here and detached garage, store and hobby room on this side. Previously approved and current street scenes are shown here for comparison. And it was previously comparable with the height of the approved dwelling to the east. Photo one shows the application site. Photo two shows this in relation to the dwellings to the east. And photos three and four detail the dwellings to the west. Planning permission has previously been granted for a similar scheme and the current application seeks to amend the overall design and increase the ridge height from 8.7 to 9.1 metres. This is 0.8 metres higher than the dwelling to the west and 0.4 higher than the approved dwelling to the east. Significant negotiations have been undertaken on previous schemes in relation to the, uh, the roof height and it is considered that the proposal put forward is unacceptable owing to its detriment, its impact and dominance in relation to the dwellings to the west and detriment to the wider street scene. As such, it is recommended to refuse this application as set out on page 77 of the agenda. Yeah, thanks once again, Nikki. We have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Shana Jackson. Of course, she's the agent to make her present uh, presentation in committee. When you're seated, you have also have five minutes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak in support of this application. As you've just heard, this application seeks approval for amendments to a dwelling which was approved in April this year, and it was previously approved in 2020. The differences between the schemes include minor design changes, as detailed in paragraph 9.4 of the committee report, as well as a change in the height of the roof. The application has been recommended for refusal for reason that the proposed new roof height would be dominant in the street scene, which would harm the character of the area. Your note from the submitted street scene, which is in your application agenda pack, that there is a lot of variety in this particular street scene, and that the proposal will be no higher than other properties within the area. 
The eaves height of the dwelling would be the same as was approved in the previous application, and it's just the ridge height which would be increased by 40 centimetres because of a change in the roof pitch to 30 degrees. The reason the roof pitch has changed is that it represents a more traditional pitch, which is consistent with other properties in the area. The roof was previously submitted at 35 degrees, but was reduced to achieve the height requested by officers and to gain approval as the applicants were keen to make a start as various external factors had held them up previously following their 2020 consent. Now being in a position to commence development next week and on reflection, the applicants consider that a 30 degree pitch would represent a betterment in terms of aesthetics of the dwelling and would be more visually appropriate as it would match other properties within the area. It is submitted that the additional 40 centimetres from what was previously approved would appear negligible when viewed from the public, public vantage. However, it would allow for the roof pitch to match the neighbouring dwellings. <clears throat> the application is deemed acceptable in all other aspects, the point of contention being the ridge height, which still remains lower than other properties within the street scene. I hope you're able to see that there is no harm caused by the proposal and are able to support the scheme accordingly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Jackson. Now I'd like to ask members if they've got any questions, clarifications to Ms. Jackson, please, this is your time. Thank you. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Mrs. Jackson. Um, on many occasions at this planning committee, I've made the comment where Officers have worked with agents and developers to bring a scheme forward that was previously deemed not, not acceptable. And I've praised them for that. In a former life, if you'd have been on that, if you'd have been that officer that was working with that developer to bring a scheme that was um, acceptable, that previously was unacceptable, I think you'd be fairly well miffed to be back in the seat, looking at the same thing, trying to get back where you was to start with. Would that be true? That's, I think that's, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> that's unfair, uh, Mr. German. I think that's probably. I think that's a little bit just too far. I don't think we can. I don't think we can. You don't have to answer that. I've made my mind up. You can think about it and give Councillor Sutton. Uh, an indication of where you were after the meeting, but I don't think I can allow this in a in a public meeting. But I do see where you're coming from, Councillor Sutton. But please don't feel feel free not to answer that question. So, members, anybody else got any questions? So what's the point? You're not going to have the Well, in my in my view, it's it's a leading question, isn't it? And it's it's bringing uh, uh, that into into dispute, really. So, anyway, that, I'm moving on. So, anybody got any more questions for Miss Jackson? before we let her go. No, thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, right, members, questions, clarifications to officers. No, can't see anybody. Oh, Councillor Benny, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Question for Dick. What is the average height of a roof in Benland? And what is the maximum height of a roof in Benland? May I phone a friend, Chairman? <laughs> you can, you can, uh, Nick. Please do. Or would you like me to? Do, would you like me to just pull the break while you find out? <laughs> I mean, Hold on, if, if you can, thank you. Honestly, I couldn't say. I couldn't well, say. well I, 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 can I come back? I mean, Perhaps you can pull what, a bit more. What, what? What? What are we looking at? I mean, there are some houses which are. Even higher than this, I can think of one in Wilmington that was passed that was, yeah, um, and uh, in Bridge Lane that is that was absolutely monstrous. It was going to blot the sun out and it'd be dark in Wilmington forever. Um, <laughs> but it's been built, and as you drive past it, all you see is a nice house, and nobody ever thinks that's too high. Well, maybe you do in Wilmington, maybe it blocks the sun out for you, Maureen, but you know. We've got permitted development where you can build another another story on your house with permitted development, and we're arguing over forty centimetres. This is questions to officers, Councillor Benny. You can use that. You can use this argument if you wish to no, I just, in I the just, debate. But so we I, are I questions. Just, to I just officers. wondered what what the height was because it's got to. If it's too high, it's got to be based on something. And what is that something? And 
you know, we, you know, I'm asking for guidance, Nick. What is the height of an average building in Finland? I think in this case, it's the fact that the plots between were a quite modest two-storey cottage to the west and a property that's been approved at eight point seven to the east. So previously, it was no higher than the approved dwelling to the east. It now is. So we would be looking for a transition between the lower property and the approved property at 8.7, whereas this is now proposed to be that much higher. I'm not aware of that. Yeah. Okay, Council Benny. So we're still, we're still, after. Anybody can ask questions, members, clarifications to officers. I can't see a burning desire to go anymore, so we'll close that and we'll go into debate. So anybody wants to kick off this debate, please. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I don't think the question is, is anything to do with how high other buildings are or, or anywhere else. I think the question is, as, as I pointed out to uh, Mrs. Jackson, that after all the work done to bring this forward, they've got planning permission, um, and then to come back, to put it back to where it was negotiated going on down, that's, that's the key issue in my view. Um, I, I just don't think it's right. You know, we, we, we want the officers to work with agents and, and developers to get where we want to be. And then they just put it back in again. I, I just don't get it. I, well, I do. I do get it. it you know, it, it, it's, it's easy to agree something and then come back and say, well, we'll get it later on. But I don't think we should allow it. I think we should, we should, we should say, you know, officers have got this right. And, and that's end of story. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Sutton. Any, we're still in debate. I have to remind everybody, Councillor Sutton kicked the debate off. So hopefully there'll be some more people want to join it. Councillor Benny, thank you. This comes back to my earlier comment this afternoon about people paying their money and they pay their money and they get the process. And this is the process. It comes before us, whether that's approved or not this afternoon is the process. And sorry. Yeah. I was saying that this comes back to my earlier comment today. People who pay for these planning applications pay the money for the system. And this is the process that it goes through. And if it ends up here, if it gets refused today, it gets refused. That is the process. They accept that. If it gets approved today, that is equally the process. They paid for that. They paid for that service. That is the way the system works. So it comes, it comes to today of what the committee says is acceptable or not. Does 40 centimetres make the difference on a house or not? And um, I would say probably not, uh, but there we are. Let's see. Let's see where the debate goes. Yep. Councillor Council Marks, please. Thank you. I think I'd quickly go back to what Councillor Benny said earlier about the, the property in Wimbledon. We sat here for half an hour discussing height, and actually, if you drive around the bypass and look at it, you can't tell whether that's two, three, five feet taller. It blends in over a period of time. And I think, again, 40 centimetres, are you really going to notice? No. Councillor French, thank you. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, whether it's 30 centimetres or 40 centimetres, it's, it's, it's not a lot. And, you know, if somebody's prepared to um, put planning application in, want, um, I would say, probably a semi-executive home, uh, why not? You know, we want to see more executive homes. We want to encourage people to move. And especially, I know that um, Councillor Benny, with his economic, economic growth you know we are looking for business people to move into this area and where business people move into this area they want exactly homes and that is where the economy um um increases yeah good point councillor french councillor topwood thank you yeah thank you chairman um i agree with councillor benny and councillor french i've got no issue really with this i don't think the 40 centimetres is going to make much of a difference. And I actually think it's going to actually improve the environment around the area. So I think I'd be minded the same as Councillor French, Councillor Benny, go against 
officer's recommendations and stuff. Did, did you say 47 meters or 47 centimeters? <laughs> Hopefully 40 centimeters. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. David would like to come in there, thank you. Just, I'm just sitting here wondering, you know, if 40 centimeters makes no difference to the planning committee, why does it make so much difference to the applicant? That, that's, what, that's the question I want answered. Why does those 40 centimetres mean so much that this application has come back again? And perhaps if we had an answer to that, we might be able to make a decision. That's another, that's another angle, uh, Councillor Davis, that's for sure. Um, right, we're still in debate. I mean, that's another theory that we can explore if anybody else wants to explore that. Um, but I can't see anybody else. Oh, Councillor Benny, thank you. Um, I mean, the only thing, I'm not an expert, I'm not a planner or nothing like that. But if you have an extra 40 centimetres, that means the difference between having a room that goes up and has part of the roof making that, or it squares the room off, which makes the room where you can put different more furniture in and it makes it a more usable room for the person who lives there. I've had that in one of my properties where it had to have the sloping size and you can't get wardrobes because you can't get them back to the wall because of that angle. I don't know whether in this case it's that, but I have looked at things and thought if that was a little bit taller, I could have made that room square, which would have made it a lot better. I did, just to try and give you some, I, I don't know with this where it is. I, I haven't seen the detailed plans, but if I was looking to build somewhere and that 40 centimetres made the difference between squaring the room off and having an odd shape, I would much rather have the 40 centimetres and the square room. I just like to come in there. Um, wasn't it mentioned by Miss Jackson, the agent, that she was going to have the other 40 centimetres to put the proper slope, which matches the next door one. I, I, I don't think I'm wrong. So maybe that's the answer uh, in the agent's presentation that we're looking for. So, so the slope of the roof is in keeping with the one next door. That might, that might be the reason why they want the extra 40, cent, 40 centimetres to make it blend in better with the adjoining property. Councillor Benny? I mean, I'm only speculating. I'm, I'm no expert on this. And I'm, not, I'm not privy to the information. But also, there is a max or a minimum pitch you can put on a roof of slate design because of the, the way the water runs off. So whether that has any bearing again, uh, it, it could be whether it matches or whether the pitch could be changed and still end up with that. I don't know. But we've been asked for the person who's going to live there. Can you have another 40 centimetres? And I think that's a fair, I think that's a fair <laughs> ask. <laughs> okay, well, with that, we'll bring Councillor Mayor in. No, the only argument I've got is what you've just said, is why wasn't this picked up at the initial application stage? If it's to do with next door and angles and everything else, you approved or we approved an application that they've now brought back because somebody's decided that the roofs don't match next door or whatever. It just doesn't make sense. Thank you, Councillor Mayor, for those comments. Uh, for, me, for me, oh, sorry, Councillor Sutton, and I'll have just, a go in a minute. Uh, just for a bit of clarification, Chair, the, the, the roof height and the pitch will depend on the footprint. If you're restricted to a roof height, it's going to be there, but the footprint of this house is bigger than the footprint of that house, then the pitch of the roof is going to be different. It has to be. Mm. So the, 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 the argument about the pitch, to, to me, is a non-argument. It's about the roof height that we're looking at. The pitch is it rain, rain will run off at 10, 10 degree pitch, 45, 50, you can have, it, we have flat roofs with two inches of pitch. You know, it, that, that uh, to me is, is, is a non-argument. We're, we're looking at roof height and, and the pitch. We're going down completely the wrong route, in my view. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. I mean, the comment I was making, I, and I alluded to, was what Miss Jackson said in her presentation, the, ro the roof is going to be the same pitch as the, as the next door one. And that is what she said in her presentation. But you are quite right. that, that is, I'm only going on what she said, which is, in my view, is right. Uh, but anyway, we're still open for debate. Right. No, no one else wants to say anything? No. Right. Okay, I'm going to close the debate now. Officers, please. Nothing for me, Chairman. 
nothing. No, nothing from anybody else. No, right. So I'm looking for a proposal on the application, please. Councillor Sutton. I guess, um, I don't even know, I'll get in a second, but I guess it's not going to go through, but I suggest we go with the officer recommendation, Chair. Officer, officer recommendation to, so we've got an, a proposal from Councillor Sutton to go with officer recommendation to refuse this said application. Have I got a second for that? Councillor Mayor, so, okay, that's, so, Mayor. Okay, so with that, to go against, to go with officer recommendation to refuse this application, proposed by Councillor Sutton, seconded by Councillor Mayor, could we have a show of hands on who's going to support that or not? So it's clearly, clearly that application has been defeated. So I'm looking for those against. That's clearly so that, that that proposal has clearly been defeated by eight to three. So I'm looking for another proposal. Councillor Benny, seconded by Councillor French. Please let me know what your proposal is. Yeah, the proposal is we go against officer's recommendation and approve this extra 40 centimetres of roof height. Um, and it's just because LP 16D making uh, protecting high quality developments. I don't see where this 40 centimetres makes any difference. And I believe that this will give a better quality of life, which is what we look for in LP2, uh, for the people who are actually going to live there. So I think that the benefits outweigh the detriment of the extra height. Okay, anything to add to that, Councillor French, before I bring in Nick in? I know, but I'm, I'm asking you a second, if you've got anything to add to it. I know he does, but let's go in Let's go in order. Nick? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, to Councillor Benny, is that with uh, delegated responsibility to officers to roll over the relevant conditions from the previous consent. Yes, that certainly is, Nick. Okay, so we've got, so now we're going to return to a proposal to go against officer recommendation to approve this said application proposed by Councillor Benny. Councillor French has kindly seconded it. Let's go to the vote on that proposal, please. Those against. That application has been approved against officer recommendation. Thank you. So again, now I'll hand over to Nikki Carter to present agenda item number seven, FYR 2207-460. So Nikki, when you're ready again, please, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Agenda item seven is an outline application for up to two dwellings with all matters reserved. It is essentially the same as an application refused in December last year due to the unsustainable location of the site, the detrimental impact on the character and appearance of the area, and failure to pass the sequential test in relation to flooding. The application site is indicated in red on the location plan and aerial photograph. It is located to the north side of Broad Drove West, a single track road, and comprises an area of vacant grassland enclosed with planting. The site falls within flood zone three. The existing site plan can be seen on this slide. There are two concrete slabs installed for the purposes of siting two holiday cabins under a 2007 permission, approved under the previous development plan. The modest cabins have not been constructed, but could still be implemented and are restricted to holiday accommodation only and cannot be used as a permanent home. An indicative site layout and street scene are shown on this slide. Views across the site can be seen here. And the current condition of one of the concrete slabs can be seen in this photo. This application is essentially the same as an application refused in December last year for the same reasons now put forward. Namely, the proposal would result in unjustified permanent housing in an unsustainable countryside location and is considered to undermine and detract from the rural character and appearance of the area. Furthermore, the site is located in flood zone 3, 
national and local policy seek to steer developments to areas at the lowest risk of flooding. Their extent consents and sites reasonably available in flood zone one, and as such, the sequential test has failed. It is acknowledged that the extent permission for two holiday cabins could still be implemented. However, these are restricted to holiday accommodation only and cannot be used as a permanent home. As such, these would not set a precedent for permanent dwellings. It should also be noted that in the event of a flood, occupants would not be displaced from their main residence, as would be the case for permanent dwellings. As such, it is recommended to refuse this application, as set out on page 92 of the agenda. Yep. Thank you once again, Nikki. You're very busy this afternoon. Uh, we have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Shana Jackson to make her presentation. Committee, again, you have five minutes. Thank you. Hello again. <laughs> <coughs> As you've just heard, the proposal is for two dwellings on a parcel of land which already benefits from planning permission for two holiday log cabins. The application for the holiday log cabins has been implemented and therefore remains extant. The dwellings proposed are for the daughters of the applicant, Mr Hopkin, and they're employed in a family business at Allenby Farm. They currently live at Allenby Farm and don't wish to relocate away from the village. The site, which already has planning permission for a type of accommodation, is in a prime location for the future occupiers to carry out a self-build project whilst remaining in close proximity to their existing employment and to their family. The reasons for refusal include that there would be no justification for the proposal in this countryside location, which would undermine sustainability principles. However, the harm in terms of sustainability, if any, has already been caused by the permission for the holiday cabins, which, offers, which officers have acknowledged could be brought onto the site at any time. The question therefore is whether new housing in this location would be less sustainable than the holiday cabins. I would argue that dwelling houses are similar in character to holiday accommodation, given that they both provide a type of residential accommodation. One of the key differences being that holiday accommodation is likely to attract further vehicular movements, given that holiday makers will travel to and from the site on excursions and for food and drink by private vehicle. This is in stark contrast to the proposed future occupiers who will be within walking distance to their place of work and will therefore be much less reliant on their private motor vehicles. It's worth noting that the permission for the holiday accommodation did not contain any restrictions in terms of the time of occupancy throughout the year and therefore the cabins could be occupied by holidaymakers all year round, in very much the same way as a standard dwelling. I'd therefore question what the harm would be in having new attractive dwellings on this site in lieu of the permitted holiday cabins, when the holiday cabins allow for continuous accommodation anyway. The application is submitted in outline only, and therefore the opportunity remains to design an attractive pair of self-built properties, which would be of a higher quality, both in appearance and in construction, than the permitted holiday cabins. The site already has permission for two units of accommodation, and it is submitted that the proposal would cause no more harm to the rural locality than the extant permission on site. This is particularly noting that the boundary hedging will remain on site and will soften the appearance of the dwellings when viewed from the wider locality. If anything, the proposal will be an improvement on the extant permission, as it would allow for permanent structures on site and could provide first floor accommodation, both of which would be a betterment in terms of flood risk by providing a safer type of accommodation in the event of flooding. The comments raised with regards to the sequential test have been noted. However, as this site already benefits from planning permission and the scheme would improve would re represent an improved situation in terms of flood risk, I would submit that the scheme is sequentially acceptable. There are no objections raised by technical consultees, including the Environment Agency, the North Level IDB and the Highway Authority. I hope you are able to appreciate the merits of this, of this case in that the site already benefits from planning permission for two units of continuous accommodation and therefore the principle of this site of development on this site is already established. The proposal seeks to essentially vary the type of approved accommodation to provide self built plots to allow for local residents to stay within the local area and in close proximity to their employment. There is no harm caused in policy terms and the scheme provide, presents a betterment in terms of flood risk. I hope you're able to support the application accordingly. Mr Hopkins should have been registered to speak and he is actually sitting in a public gallery if anyone wants to ask him questions. 
Thank you for your time. Members, it's time for questions for Miss Jackson, clarifications or anything like that. And if we do need to bring Mr. Hopkins into it, I'm at the chairman's discretion, I will allow that to happen if Miss Jackson can't answer the questions. I think there's an oversight I'm led to believe. So there we go. So Councillor Benny, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, um, you mentioned briefly that the uh, that there's family members want these and they are in the family business. What what is the family business and how would this help that business develop and grow? if this was granted by keeping them in the area, keeping local employment in this area. Um, you, you, you've touched on it. I'd love a, lot more, a little bit more information on the benefits of this development um, on top of the other already reasons you've given. Yeah, I think Mr. Hopper might be better placed to answer this, but sort of on, on the surface, I'd say that um, being, I mean, they, they're sort of living and working on site at the moment and this allows them to stay within that area to continue to support the business um is it right if i ask mr yeah. uh, the farm yeah, yeah sorry farm farm i think we do need to elaborate on that it's not i do think we need to elaborate on it. it's not a thing i usually do uh, and probably and i and i don't want this to set a precedent but i think if mr hopkins will join it will it will, it will save going backwards and forwards and and any members um that want to ask Mr. Popkins questions, please do so. But uh, Councillor Benny, you can carry on if you like. Thank you very much, Jim. Mr. Popkins, good afternoon. Um, you say this is for, for family members. Can you tell us a little bit about the business and, and how this will help your business by keeping family members within the community, of, I assume, where they're working at the moment? Um, yeah. And just give us a little bit of background on that, please. Dominantly, we're farmers. Um, we, we, we've got some stock. As well, so they they work within that. They sort of there within twenty four hours, sort of looking after the stock and that type of thing. It will allow us to actually take on more land as well um, and more stock should we require. So you're looking to develop your business and enhance the business by bringing family members in, and these properties will enable that Correct. to to go ahead. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Answer French, and then I'll come in there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you say stock. Can you tell me what kind of stock? Is it chicken, goats, cattle? <laughs> we, 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 we've got some goats. We, we, we've got chickens, and there's there's plans for um, cows as well. Some bullocks for, for beef. Okay. Uh, Councillor Marks and Councillor Sutton. Thank you. Roughly, how far away is the farm? Next door. From, from from the development yeah. of 50, 60 metres. Right. Councillor Sutton, would you like to, you like to uh, ask your question? Um, yeah, Mr Hopkins, how many acres do you farm? We, we have 540. And how many is employed? There's myself and two daughters. So members, you can, you certainly can, Councillor Davis. I'm pleased for you to do so. And my goats. We're, we're drilling into it now. I'm just wondering how many staff you need to look after goats and chickens when a lot of people just keep them in their backyards. I just wondered how many, are we talking commercial number of goats or? No, we're not, no, no we're just talking, there's something there's three there at the minute, but we're, so you need two daughters to live on site to look after three goats? Oh, well, that's, that's what we've said, that they're going to develop it into a beef herd for cattle as well. Thank you. Right. Any more questions for Mr Hopkin or Mrs Jackson before we let them return to their seats? No burning desire. Thank you very much. I think that was a useful exercise to let them, uh, Mr Hopkins, to answer the questions. Members, questions to officers. Councillor Davis. I go back to my um, pet hate and sitting here at the last committee meeting, sequential test not being done again. If the sequential when you're on a holiday home, 
then the sequential test doesn't apply because someone won't be displaced from their main residence. Am I understanding that correctly? We are putting you through your paces this afternoon, aren't we? It would still apply, but the previous application was determined in 2007 when there was a very different uh, policy requirement. Thank you. And I'll ask the question, thank you. Right, so members, we're still in questions to officers. <laughs> Nick, oh, Nick, okay. I'm uh, anticipating a possible question, Chairman. Um, in terms of the application submission, and this isn't a, 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 um, a supposed to be or shouldn't be interpreted as me being negative towards the applicant or the agent, but um, the application, as far as I can see, mentions that um, the dwellings would be for occupation by family members who do not wish to relocate and want to stay in their village. Um, so there's no mention in there of these being tied to the business. There's no information um, submitted that evidences um, how well the business is doing, no business plans um, showing um, how the business is intended to grow and what the needs would be for looking after that farm and on that basis i think members should sort of disregard that as a uh, as a matter that would potentially be used to help you determine the application because we don't have any factual information to support that thank you chairman yep thank you nick uh councillor french you've got a, a question to nick have you thank you thank you uh if i heard right i heard miss Mr. Jackson state that there was no, I um, can't remember the exact, um, on the holiday lets, which they haven't built yet, um, there's no time scale on them, how, how many times they can be occupied. So what's to stop them building the holiday lets and just living in them? Uh, through you, uh, on the basis of them being holiday accommodation, they can't be your, by definition, uh, your main residence. It's it's a technical thing. I mean, they could. I mean, they could live in them, and it's might it might, and then they have their postal put to another address, the father's address, or Auntie Sally's, or anything like that. We want to encourage people to cheat, then, do we? We don't want to. Yeah, that 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 is what um, we're trying to. We're what said here to try and encourage people, which we obviously don't want could to I, do. I just so, Councillor Bench, would you like to come back on that? Yes, please. Uh, I mean, obviously, I listened to what um, Nick said with regard to a business plan, etc. I mean, there's over 500 acres, um, which are, I'm sure is farmed, and they've got a few animals that they want to increase. Mm. But I'm quite sure, having run a business for over 30 years, it's not just um, one thing that's got to be done in the business. You've got books to be kept, etc., etc. Um, so, you know, I'm not quite agreeing with Nick. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I mean, for me, I, I, oh no, I won't do that. Wait for the debate. Um, Nick, any more? In, in relation to that, the government policy on agricultural dwellings is quite clear. There's got to be a demonstrable need to have people present on site. Um, and so keeping the books, you don't need to reside on the site to be able to do that. An accountant, for example, could do that off site or a family member could do that off site. So, you know, I don't think that this is a, a factor that committees should legitimately consider in the determination of the application, simply because we don't have the facts, the written facts before us. Yeah, so we're still questions, clarifications to officers before I bring this to a close. And I'll go into debate. So no, no burning desire. We're in, we're in debate now. So who'd like to kick this off? Councillor Sutton. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, just, just to cover your back, Chairman. On the previous refusal, you agreed with planning officers that it should be refused. So I wonder whether that affects 
where you really ought to be sitting. It wasn't, it wasn't brought to my attention, Councillor Sutton, at Chairman's briefing or no time before and no time since until you brought it up. But I'm happy, I'm happy to bring Stephen in on that one to clarify where I need to be. So I think it's important. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for bringing that up, Councillor Sutton. Um, but I'm happy for Stephen. To Thank you, Chairman. Are, are we talking just a separate application that, that was refused? Yeah. Then this is another application, and um, any members entitled to look at the new application mm. and assess it on its merits. So you can't be you can't be obliged to refuse numerous applications that come in chronologically because you have refused the first one. Okay, I'll, I'll take that advice. Thank you for, for bringing that up, Councillor Sutton. I very appreciate you watching my back. Um, I've, cer I've certainly got several stab wounds in there already this yes. afternoon, but uh, we should have to go to the Mine Ranges Unit <laughs> Doddings and get them sorted out, no doubt. So, um, yeah, with that, that, following that, Chairman, I'll carry on then. Um, yeah, carry on, please, Councillor Sutton. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you know, if, if, if the applicant is claiming that it's for an agricultural worker, then they should go through the proper process. And that is to, to, to prove a, 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 a demonstrable need. Um, they haven't done that. And they certainly couldn't on 540 acres, uh, you know, they, they couldn't justify two dwellings. They, they, they just wouldn't be able to do it. It would never pass all, all, all the tests. And, you know, with the best will in the world, they've got extant permission to put there to holiday lets on there, which in 2007, from the reasons I've had, is you know, was there was an urgent need for them at that time. Um, turns out not to be an urgent need. But the officers, in my view, has got this exactly right. You know, it, it was refused with your blessing, Chairman, as I said, um, just a short time ago, year 21, 14, 12, was changed. That, you know, there's, there's nothing changed. You know, it's it's way way out. You know, it's it's not even close to the village. Um, it hasn't got support from the parish council, and and you know, I have to say, uh, reading that report from the parish council, uh, it, it was quite quite enlightening to see that the parish councils now. I know it's because we've had some training lately. Um, you know, they are bringing forward sensible reasons for refusal. They are quoting uh, policy numbers, and you know that. that that's to be applauded. Um, I, I, I think officers have got this one exactly right, just as they did have last time, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor Murphy, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, Chairman. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to this. I, 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 I've got totally agree with the Councillor uh, Sutton. I don't normally do that because we generally <laughs> logarate with one another, but uh, I, I think he is totally right this time. I mean, uh, I, I really shouldn't say it, but I, I think it's just trying to put wool over our eyes for something that they want that uh, is not necessary and not needed. So I totally agree with the officers as well, and it should be refused. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Anybody want to add to this debate? Councillor Benny, I thought you might. Thank you. Well, you know me, I like, I like to bring balanced view to all these applications. And absolutely so you should, yeah. Councillor Benny. I mean, in, in fairness and openness, as we say, I think there is another side to this. There is a gentleman here who's running a business and he wants to bring his family into it. I agree with Councillor Sutton, there is a method for doing that and maybe that should have been done. We've got an application here in front of us this afternoon for two homes. And uh, if somebody wants to bring their family into the business and, and let this business grow, I think we should do what we can to support this, this business. And you know, not everybody wants to live on an estate surrounded by other people and houses, and these are the kind of houses people want, and those, those in the countryside. And you know, if we were building next to somebody else's house, it'd be all it's overlooking. We can't build here, and all that windows overlooking there, and there's no overlooking here. And these are going to be two nice houses. And we also had at uh, Guy Hearn where we had caravans in flood zone three, and we passed applications there for those because uh, it's safer to be in a house than it is in a caravan because you can put better mitigation measures in to safeguard people. So um, I would be inclined to support this application this afternoon. Um, 
you know, I, I just feel there's, there's benefits here and it's providing homes for family members within a business. It probably could have been done differently, but equally we are where we are and I don't see anything wrong with this application. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. I mean, for me, I, I tend to agree with you, Councillor Benny. We should be encouraging people to, to have houses. You are absolutely right in Wisby St Mary's. Um, it was the Cunninghams. They asked to build a house and the planning committee passed that. Um, and really, um, it is a little bit different and it should have been probably done in a different way. But we are where we are and we've got to look what's in front of us this very afternoon. But I do tend to agree with you, Councillor Benny, but I will bring you back in. Thank you. I mean, also the sequential test. I mean, I've done a little bit of reading up on this. I've done quite a lot since last planning meeting. And I feel that up until probably three planning meetings ago, as a committee, we were accepting that mitigation measures and building in flood that zone three is acceptable. A lot of the overturns, we've, the officers overturns we've done, which has brought forward a lot of properties and a lot of homes that people are going to live in, is done on this sequential test. And as Councillor Sutton has said many times, we can build in Whiz Beach um, in flood zone three, but we can't build in Bennett and Turves. And yet Whiz Beach floods far more often than Bennett and Turves ever will. And all of the, the, the mitigation measures that you can put in help safeguard that. And also it would flood if they turned off all the pumps. Well, they're never going to stop. If they do, we're all going to be underwater anyway. Um, so to look at this, I, I view this sequential test, and I've given this some serious thoughts since we were last here, that this is an absolute block to development. And this is stopping what is sensible and feasible and viable applications being turned down because we're never going to build in flood zone one and completely build everything out in flood zone two. And then we're going to start on some zone and then we're going to start on flood zone two. And then we can go into flood zone three. There's a lot of land which is ideal for building on and we're turning it down because of this test. And the more I looked into it, how the test is done gives an imbalanced view. And I don't consider that, you know, when we've got a good application in front of us, that that is good enough reason to turn it down. For many years, we have overturned on, on those grounds that there is a need for it. And I feel this last couple of meet, meetings, we've gone off track of where we were and where we should be. And I think we need to get back on track and keep passing these applications if they come forward and are judging them on their own merit every time. But I feel that there is a, you know, if, if we adhere to this religiously as a sequential test, we are going to be turning down good applications, good homes for people. And I don't think that, you know, over the last few years, we haven't done that. And I think we need to get back to where we were. And to that and consistency is very, very much um, something that as a committee we should be doing. And I feel we've drifted off that this last two meetings and we need to get back on track with it. Thank you for your overall view on that. But um, have you got anything to say regarding sequential test or none or the lack of it on this application, Councillor Benny? I think we're where I described my view on the sequential test. I think that, you know, there are, we, we, could, we could have caravans on there and caravans drift away in a flood. If it's going to flood that badly, we should be putting a house on there and make it safe for the people who live there. That's fine. That's fine. Councillor Sutton, you'd like to come back? I would, Chip. Um, I just, I just get mind boggled with it. Um, if this application comes in the manner it should come, if it's for a farm worker, then the sequential test is null and void because they need the dwelling to be where it is, to be close to ideally three or 400 head of stock, which you would need for a full-time stockman. Um, so it can't be anywhere else. So that, that sequential test, it, it, it is passed like automatically if they pass the um, agricultural need. So the spiel about the sequential test is a, a non-goer because if the application is done properly, th there won't be a, a sequential test issue. Um, I'm sure Nick or, or Nikki could confirm that rightly or wrongly. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to add to this debate? Um, no? 
no. So I'm going to close the debate now and Nick can uh, confirm or otherwise Councillor Sutton's uh, concerns you, or... Yeah. Through you, Chairman, um, Councillor Sutton is, is broadly right. Um, just to remind members that um, the sequential test is not the same as the exceptions test, and it's the exceptions mm. test mm. which, um, amongst other things, um, determines whether or not the mitigations that you're proposing for your development are sufficient to deal with uh, the flood risks that are in hand. Um, but uh, in policy terms, this is a nationally driven thing where the legislation, well, the, the, the national policy says um, the sequential test must be undertaken. You can't not do it. Okay, so anybody got any more questions, clarifications before I ask for a proposal on this said application? No? Okay, I'm looking for a proposal. Councillor Sutton, what are you going to propose? Officer recommendation, Chairman. So, Councillor Sutton. So, Councillor Sutton's proposing we go with officer recommendation to refuse this application. As I said, proposed by Councillor Sutton. Has he got, have you got a second for that, Councillor Mayor? So, with that, then uh, we'll now go to the vote on that proposal, please. And the proposal is just to reiterate to go again to go with officer's recommendation to um, reject this application to refuse this application. Okay, those against? Seven, so applications, for that, uh, that proposal has failed, so I'm looking for a new proposal. Um, Councillor Benny? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I would like to propose that we go against officer's recommendation and approve this application. Reasons, um, Councillor Benny, please? My reasons are that it's already got existing permission for caravans, and I think it would be safer for having a proper house on there. Um, it will bring employment to the area, which is good. Um, and also, although it hasn't followed the, the, probably the correct procedure, I feel that as, as family members living there, if this enables a business to grow within Finland, I think this is a, a good thing. And um, I, I just feel that the benefits of this outweigh the detriment side of it. Okay. Oh, sorry, Nick. Uh, Chairman, uh, we need to cover off um, why uh, an exceptions test uh, doesn't need to be passed and um, the other issue um, relates to the imposition of conditions. Um, as Councillor Benny has proposed approval of this scheme and associated it with the business, um, and also reference was made to them being um, self-built properties, there'd be the requirement for a Section 106 agreement to tie them to be self-built um, properties, plus in terms of occupation, that they can only be occupied in association with the, with the business. Yeah. As well as sundry conditions. B, B for one. I, I mean, I don't. I'll, I'll second it if, 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 if that's okay. But I'm quite happy with with those conditions. Uh, Miss Jackson and Mr. Hopkin um, have categorically said they're for the business and they're for the, their daughters. So we have to take them on face value. So you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to put those that condition forward. I, I, I'm sure Mr. Miss Jackson and Mr. Hopkin are as well true to the word so i'm happy with that and i'm happy with that as a condition as well and i'll second that thank you as well so so we've got a proposal to go against office recommendation uh proposed by councillor benny seconded by myself councillor connor with those conditions that they're self-build and they're occupied solely by the applicant's daughters or someone connected with that farm yeah yeah we need the, the reason why the Sequential test doesn't need to be applied in this Okay, Councillor Benny. Sorry, it's because it's for family members to enhance their business and therefore the need is there. Thank you.
a healthy debate, and that's what we like on this planning committee. Um, right. We have a Thursday member here. Could we have a break, do you think? So what we'll do, we'll have we'll have we'll have 10 minutes if you like. So anybody can do whatever they need to do. Thank you. And we'll be back roughly at 10 past. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, can I remind you, we all, most of us have got another meeting this afternoon. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for being on time. Um, so now I hand over to Alison. She's a senior development officer here to present application F stroke YR 220309F agenda item number eight. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Chair. This is application F stroke YR 22 forward slash 309 forward slash F. It's for the erection of one, well, eight residential units comprising one three storey block of one bedroom flats located at five Bedford Street, Whiz Beach. The applicant is Mr. Jamie Punton and the agent is Mr. Matt Sparrow of P Temporary Associates. The application is before planning committee, given that the town council recommendation is contrary to the officer recommendation. Members will have received a written update outlining the consultation response of the Environment Agency and the officer assessment of the scheme in respect of standing advice. It is considered that the submitted FRA is an appropriate response to flood risk and save for the recommendation that an additional condition be imposed relating to flood evacuation and warning. There are no matters to reconcile in this regard. Members will note that the precise wording of the additional recommended condition is included within the update. I can also note that the agent has confirmed their agreement to the pre-commencement conditions listed at point 9.24 of the agenda report. The current slide shows the site boundaries in both plan and aerial image format. The site is located within the market town of Wisbeach and is located to the western side of Bedford Street, immediately northeast of Wisbeach Police Station and adjoining the car parking areas associated with its premises, situated to the south and the west. The site is part of the Neem Waterfront Regeneration Area and the wider area is mixed in terms of character and usage. Land to the north has been remediated and is fenced off and forms part of the Neen waterfront and broad, Port Broad location for growth. Bedford Street is a one-way street with access to the site derived from the southern approach via a dedicated spur off the Lynn Road roundabout. The slide currently on display shows the existing site which was formerly occupied as a builder's yard with a single-storey workshop which formed part of the premises now vacant and in a poor state of repair. The workshop is situated to the rear of the site with the frontage area delivering an open yard forecourt area. Constructed of brick block with a glazed upper section to its front elevation and timber at the sides. That comprises the workshop building. As can be seen from the current slide, the proposed three-storey building will, will occupy a position to the rear of the site with provision for four parking spaces, refuse and cycle storage located to each side of the parking area. A pedestrian access is to be provided central to the site frontage to enable direct access to the foyer of the building. A contemporary design is proposed for the site and at the behest of the conservation officer, a range of high quality materials are incorporated into the scheme to complement the setting of the listed building and to ensure that the proposal achieves a good standard of overall design. It is contended that the scheme strikes the right balance in that it does not seek to replicate or compete with the historic environment that has due regard to its context. The current slide gives details of the eight flats arranged over three floors with two units at ground floor level and a further three flats on each of the remaining floors. The comments of the town council are noted with regard to parking provision and it is accepted that there is a shortfall. However, weight must be given to the location of the units and the sustainability of the site. It should also be noted that whilst originally six parking spaces were proposed, this has been revised following input from officers who expressed concern that the spaces as detailed were substandard in width and as a consequence, the usability was compromised. A reduction in numbers also enabled an unencumbered pedestrian route for residents to access the foyer along with refuse and cycling provision. It is noted that the crime prevention team have inputted into the scheme design and made a number of recommendations related to CCTV, lighting and visitor access, which have been incorporated into the scheme detail and are listed in suggested conditions. 
The photos currently on display show the existing warehousing context. The upper image includes the parking area serving the police station to the side of the building. The upper left hand image shows a view looking in a northerly direction along Bedford Street. The upper right hand image shows the northern elevation of the workshop viewed from the access road to the police station's rear parking area. The lower image shows the rear of the police station with a building flanking the rear of the existing workshop and the parking areas captured. This proposal will bring back a vacant and underutilised site to provide eight one bedroom residential units. Revisions have been secured to the scheme with regard to materials, layout and security to ensure that the scheme achieves policy compliance. Whilst there is a shortfall of parking, weight is given to the sustainability of location and the need to bring this underutilised and vacant site back into active use. There is also provision within the local plan to accept reduced parking on sites, reduced or nil parking on sites such as this. This is a contemporary design aligning with the aims and aspirations of the Neem Waterfront Design Guide, which is adopted supplementary planning guidance. And the development of the site will build on the uplift of design quality in the area, reinforcing what has been delivered. To deliver the regeneration of this area. No heritage impacts have been identified in respect of the scheme and as I said before the scheme strikes the right balance for the site. Noting that it, the scheme achieves full planning, full policy compliance, accepting the locational justification for the parking shortfall, officers recommend that the application be granted. Thank you. Thank you Alison. We Rather surprisingly, we have no speakers on this application and would therefore like to invite members to put questions to officers. You know what to do if you've got any. Thanks. Members, questions to officers, Councillor French. Um, thank you. Um, I, think, I think this scheme is a um, long, long time coming. I think, uh, you know, let's hope it actually gets built out, Alison. Uh, my only concern is lack of parking. Um, and, you know, bearing in mind, we do have parking issues across the whole of Fenland, but in particular uh, in Wiz Beach. Uh, and as you're well aware, civil park enforcement will be forthcoming in, in due course. Are you satisfied that the par proposed parking um, would be adequate? These are one bedroom units that will offer something else into the mix locally. Um, the site's well located to the bus station, it's well located to the town. There's nothing to say that the residents will be disaffected by not having a car. So it doesn't necessarily follow that they, they'd actually need, need the car parking space. So I think this is, we're not talking about family homes. We're, we're talking about a particular niche for, for the housing market. Yeah, thank you, Councillor French. Anybody else got questions to officers? Councillor Sutton, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Um, I asked the same question about the flats at 24 High Street, and I can't remember what the outcome was, but it's three store and there's no lift. But I think from memory, it might have been that that will be a building control issue. Um, but I can't remember if you could just... I believe accessibility would fall into building control, but from a planning perspective, we, we can insist that a lift be, provi be provided. Anybody else questions for officers? No, well, I've just got one. It's just a comment. Um, I did say in Chairman's briefing, I'm extremely surprised. It says here, this is in flood zone two. Um, it's near the Neen waterfront. It's near the River Neen, as everybody knows. And it did flood, and I'm not going to put too much of a point on it, in 78. And um, I know they put the barriers up, so, but I am very surprised it's in flood zone too. So thank you. Any more questions to officers before I bring it into debate? No, burning desire, right, we're in debate. Who'd like to kick that off? It looks like you, Councillor French. Have you you've got something to say? I'm sure you're looking at it. Anything, so I'll just... Um, do a proposal, move the officer's recommendations. Okay, so, right, anybody else? I've, I've 
I've taken a proposal uh, before I should, but I can see where the steer's going. Anybody else got anything for the debate before I ask officers if they want to sum up anything? No, o officers, no. Right, so we've got a proposal from Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Murphy, to go with officer recommendation to approve this said application. Can I have a show of hands who agrees with those proposals? As you announce, that application has been approved. Thank you. I'd ask Alison um, to present application F stroke YR 220585F, agenda item number nine. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This application is, is for the erection of the first floor side extension and attached garage with storage above to front of existing dwelling. It's located at 143 Barton Road and the application is before committee as it was referred by the head of planning on the advice of the committee chairman and given the number of representations received contrary to officer recommendation. There are no updates on this item. The current slide shows the location of the site in plan form with the aerial image, which is the latest available, showing the foundations of the dwelling as constructed at 143 Barton Road, this being the most westerly of the recently constructed four dwellings. This slide shows the existing footprint of the dwelling in the context of the site. The main footprint of the dwelling is two storey, with the dwelling featuring a single storey link to the forward projecting garage to the western side front. The existing garage is single storey with storage accommodation in its roof space. This shows the existing dwelling with its single storey double garage projection in elevation. The proposed site layout is captured on the slide currently on display. As can be seen, the existing forward projection is further extended northwards, significantly closer to the road, with the existing garage being increased in height, as is the existing single storey link element. These height increases are fully illustrated in the next slide. The dark areas show on the slide currently on display the new build elements of the scheme. As can be seen, these are substantial additions in the context of the original dwelling. As noted in the officer report, each new element will feature a different ridge height and the additional garage will be forward of the existing built form. The dwelling is already prominent in the street scene given its positioning at the junction of Barton Road and Cox's Lane on the curve in the road. With its open front boundary, the extensions will be highly visible and are considered by virtue of their scale, bulk, design and positioning in Congress within the street scene and detrimental to the character of the area. The current slide shows the accommodation to be delivered by the extensions, which comprises an additional double garage with storage over, a new bedroom over the existing garage, and a dressing room and ensuite over the existing link element. The photographs currently on display capture the dwelling in the context in context from varying viewpoints. As can be seen, the existing garage projection is already prominent, and as a consequence of the development would become significantly more so through its increased height. This being further compounded by the introduction of an additional double garage to the front of the existing projection. The application is for a first floor extension above the existing link element and garage with an additional single storey double garage with store within the roof space positioned to the front of the site adjoining the existing garage. The site is within a built up area and therefore the proposed extension of the recently built dwelling is acceptable in principle. Similarly, whilst acceptable with regards to residential amenity, the proposal is considered to result in harm to the character and appearance of the area, and it is for those reasons the scheme is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you once again, Alison. We have one speaker on this application. I'd now like to invite Chana Jackson once again uh, to make her presentation to the committee. Again, um, you've got five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. As you just heard, this proposal is for an extension to the front to form a new attached double garage and, and first floor extensions above the existing front projections to form an additional bedroom in the form of a master suite and storage. 
The applicant is committed to high quality design and the proposal is as a result of his desire to invest in his family home and provide a high quality property which meets his family needs. And this is something which is supported by the National Design Guide. The site is located at the end of a row of houses and provides a, a natural stop to development along the Barton Road street scene, as can be seen on the submitted location plan. Being on the end of the row, the dwelling is not within a prominent position amongst the existing development and is in a location which is visually capable of accommodating extensions and alterations. A variety of roof heights is proposed within the development to provide character and visual interest when approaching the site from either side along Barton Road. It is submitted that the variation in roof heights and vertical visual breaks avoid any undue bulk and massing, contrary to the assertions made in the reason for refusal. In our opinion, it's admirable that the applicant wishes to invest in this property to provide a high quality living space which meets his family needs, and the scheme which is before you has been carefully designed to reflect this. The site is on the end of a row of houses and is capable of accommodating the proposed scale and design of the extensions, given that it forms a natural end to the street scene. I hope you're able to support this application and grant planning permission accordingly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jackson, for that presentation. Members, any questions, clarifications? No, I can't see any. Thank you very much. Members, questions, clarifications to officers? No, can't see any. Right, so now members, I'd like you to invite members to debate the application, please, in respect of the material planning considerations relevant to the application. Uh, if you'd like to speak, raise your hand. So basically, we're in debate, guys. Who'd like to kick that off? Councillor French. Yeah, these, these are large houses, and obviously they want to put a large extension on. Uh, you've only got one reason for refusal. Uh, which is the, the bulk design and unduly prominent in the street scene. Um, surely that's a matter of interpretation. Yeah, thank you for those comments. Anybody else got any? We're still in debate, guys. Anybody got any other comments? Councillor Mayor, thank you. Yeah, um, at a previous application today, we were discussing roof heights and I just wonder how many roof heights this property is going to have because there's several different ones and uh, I think that needs to be looked at. Um, one of the extensions um, actually will take out a lot of light from an existing window in that property. Um, doesn't sit comfortably. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Your thoughts are very valued. Um, still in debate. Councillor Benny, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, but if it takes the, the window out of the, uh, the existing dwelling, um, he's designed it that way and he's quite happy because he's paid his planning fee, isn't he? Um, I, I look at it and again, it's it's just somebody wanting to improve their home. Um, I really feel, you know, we should be supporting this. Um, you know, every Englishman's home is his castle and if he wants his castle to be a little bit bigger and it doesn't really interfere with anybody and this is, this is on the end. I can't see much wrong with this. I think this is, um, you know, just in a, an addition to this chap's home. Um, I think he's got a nice home and he's just trying to make it nicer. I really can't see much wrong with this one at all today. Thank you. Um, anybody? Oh, Councillor Topgood, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah. <laughs> what we need in Wisby, it's not just one bedroom houses, it's, it's all sorts of things. And we really do need high quality houses around Wisbeach to bring the money into the town. And this is somebody who wants to spend money in, in Wisbeach. They're obviously quite comfortable and well off. And these are the sort of people we also want to get in the town, not just one bedroom places, but we want decent sized family homes. Um, I can't see much wrong with this at all. No, thank you, Councillor Topgood. Um, anybody else? We're still in debate, everybody. Um, I'll come in there then. Um, not to know we want to speak. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with the previous speakers, Councillor Benny, um, French, and Topwood. I can't see anything wrong with it. Um, 
it, it, it's, percep it's perception on what people want and, they, and he wants to improve the standard of dwelling for his own personal circumstances. I don't think this, could, in my opinion, I don't think this committee should go against it, but uh, I'm still going to listen to the debate. But so anybody else want to continue? No. You don't say it right. No. Um, yeah, I will actually. Go on. Thank you. You, you tempted me. You reeled me in. Oh, I'm sure I have. <laughs> I, whilst I applaud people, um, like obviously they want, you know, they're doing well, they want to expand their home. We also have to take into account the people that live around that person. It isn't about just that person and what he wants to do or what extension he wants to build. It's the impact that it has on the, the, the street, on the neighbours around them. And actually, I think this one is, it's almost like a step too far. It's huge. It's, it, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the houses. It stands out like, I mean, when you, when we sat there on the bus, I mean, it's just this huge building in front of you um, with, I don't know how many roofs, um, don't know how many different bits of extension. And I don't think this new extension actually added to the look of the property anyway. Well, I've certainly reeled you in, Councillor Davis. Mm -hmm. um, but my uh, Councillor French, and then I'll come back. Yeah, thank thanks. You. I'd like to come back on what Councillor Davis said. Um, local residents' interest party. A total of seven comments have been received from five households, three from Magazine Lane, one from Barton Road, um, always be in support of the application. So there's nobody against it. Absolutely. Uh, that's absolutely correct, those comments. Uh, Councillor Murphy, thank you. Yeah, I just uh, I just want to say one thing about about the roofs and roof heights. If you're ever worried about that, you want to come to Chatteris and come down London Road, and you'll see one with about twenty six different roofs and twenty six different roof heights, and nobody's complained about that one either. Councillor Benny, you finished, Councillor Murphy. Have you? Yes, uh, Councillor Benny. Sean Sharp, I am. Once again, me and Councillor Murphy singing from the same hymn sheet again today. Um, I mean, that was passed with officer's approval. Yeah. Um, I mean, I expected that to end up at planning committee and have that sorted out. It's got a viewing balcony that's going to overlook the, the uh, Hallamland development when it finally comes in. And that was a pass with more than well, it was five or six different roof heights and there's steel beams sticking out of it. it looks a right mess. So I think Councillor Murphy's absolutely right. Um, you know, we've got them everywhere in Benland, don't we, Pete? Certainly Chatteris we have. Well, it's lovely to see you two agreeing for once, isn't it? So it's really refreshing. Somewhere, something. So there we go. Um, it, we're still in debate, of course. Anybody else want to add to this debate before I close it and bring in officers for a summing up? No, officers, would you like to? Nothing, nothing. Okay, so I'm looking for a proposal on this application. Who would like to make one? I'm looking at you, Councillor French. Um, you're, what are you proposing? Let's have your proposal. I, I propose that um, we go against officers' recommendation and approve this application. Okay. Reasons, Councillor French. Uh, our interpretation is different to the officers. Okay. That's and it's enough. subjective as well, isn't it? That's perhaps what you want to add in there as well. Did I see your hand up to second that, Councillor Sutton? Or were you scratching your... Oh, you were scratching your head then. Uh, Right, so, sorry, Nick. Is that the chairman uh, with delegated authority to add appropriate conditions, probably limited to the usual time limit and materials to match? Just absolutely right, Councillor French. Not too onerous. Thank you. Um, so, so anyway, I'll, I'll, sorry about that, Councillor Topgood. You're going to second it. So we've got a proposal to go against officer recommendation. Um, Proposed by Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Topgood. All those in favour of that proposal? All those against? So with that, all that, uh, that application has been approved. Thank you. Right. So... We'll move swiftly on. Everybody's all right. I think nobody wants a break yet, do they? So um, we'll have Alison again to present application. F yeah, yeah, I've got a Yeah, sorry. I'm just going to hand um, due to the 
um, unforeseen circumstances this afternoon and before. I'd now like to hand over uh, to Maureen, my, Maureen Davis, my very able vice chair, to present application number 10. Uh, thank you. Sorry, Maureen. Um, I'm okay. getting carried away. Thank That's you. Fine. Thank you, Chair. This is an application for reserve matters approval relating to detailed matters of access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale pursuant to an earlier outline planning permission. The land is north of 15 Sandbank, West Beach, St Mary, and the application is before planning committee as it was referred by the head of planning on advice of the committee chairman. There are no updates to report on this item. The slide currently on display shows the site context. It is noted that the site lies on the northwest fringe of Wisbeach and Mary and comprises agricultural grassland, part of a wider field set to the north of 15 Sandbank. This application is for reserve matters, following on from an outline application, which was granted contrary to officer recommendation by the planning committee in September, 2021. All matters were reserved and are for consideration with this application. In arriving at the earlier decision on the outline submission, the planning committee did not consider that the proposal caused demonstrable harm to the surrounding area and felt that it would approve the setting. The committee further noted that the risk of flooding could be overcome by applying flood mitigation measures. The slide currently on display shows the illustrative layout submitted at outline stage, which indicated a relatively modest gable roof dwelling with a detached garage. The earlier plan suggested that the overall footprint of the dwelling and garage cumulatively may encompass approximately 170 square metres, with the dwelling appearing approximately 12 metres wide by 8.7 metres deep. The slide currently on display shows the site layout now proposed. Members will note a substantial two-storey dwelling is shown with a footprint of 250 three square metres with a maximum width of 18 metres and a depth of 27 metres incorporating a front garage projection. Considering the widths of the nearby dwellings it is evident that the proposed dwelling will be considerably larger and will appear distinctly more dominant than the surrounding dwellings to the detriment of the prevailing character and street scene. In addition the detailed scheme seeks to include a garage projection set to the front of the dwelling on its western side. This will see the dwelling noticeably different to the form and building line of nearby developments that do not include any substantial forward outbuildings or garages, which again will differentiate the dwelling from its surroundings and exacerbate its prominent appearance in the street. As identified at outline stage, to address flood risk, the dwelling must be two storey with finished floor levels set at a minimum of one metre above surrounding ground levels. This necessary raising of the dwelling will exacerbate the height of the dwelling in comparison to the surrounding development. Whilst the indicated ridge height of the dwelling is 7.95 metres from finished floor level, the actual height of the dwelling in respect of current ground levels on which the surrounding development is set, the proposed dwelling would have a ridge height of approximately 8.95, significantly higher, approximately 1.2 metres, than the nearest semi-detached dwellings to the south. Again, this will intensify the dwelling's dominance in the street scene, although it is accepted that with a separation distance of 18.8 metres, this may be reduced in terms of perception of the height difference. Although this separation in itself is not a common feature of the existing street. Within the officer report, more specific concerns are highlighted with regard to the dwelling's appearance with its detailing and glazing combining to represent a dwelling which is considered out of character with the uniform and simplistic character of the general area. The photographs currently on display show the site in context with the upper images showing the proposed site and the neighbouring dwelling. The lower left hand image shows the properties opposite and the lower right hand image shows number 15 and properties to the southeast. On the basis of the consideration of detailed matters of access, appearance, layouting and layout, landscaping, layout and scale, pursuant to the outline planning commission, there would be conflict with adopted plans policy in relation to appearance, layout and scale. The proposal seeks to erect a large dwelling adjacent to more modest dwellings of particular form and character. By virtue of its appearance, layout and substantial scale of the proposed dwelling, 
the scheme would result in undue dominance within the street scene, which would be harmful to the character and appearance of the area when viewed in context. The proposal would therefore be contrary to the requirements of relevant planning policies and must therefore be recommended for refusal. Thank you, Chair. What's up with you this afternoon? <laughs> well, once again, this is um, a recommended refusal under LP16, which again is um, you know, a matter of um, interpretation. Um, again, people want executive houses, they want large homes. And I, I think, you know, we're going to have more and more of these applications coming in. Um, I don't really see much wrong with that. Um, I, I, I'm inclined to support this application simply because um, when you look at the other surrounding properties, they, they vary in size. You've got some larger, some smaller. Um, and because this is on the end, I don't think it's going to have an overall impact. So um, I'd be inclined to support the application. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember when this came through as an outline application. Um, we supported the outline application, and as reserve matters, I think we should be supporting this today. Um, it's on the entrance into the village, and I've said many times we've got it in Chatteris. When you come in from Doddington, you've got the big houses that are just as soon as you get past William Curve Terrace, you've got those big houses, and I think they enhance the area. And I think uh, a building of this stature will enhance the entrance to the village. Um, and I see nothing wrong with this. Um, we. I, I sort of anticipated when this came through as an outline application that we would have something of a grand nature. I'd like to see more grand designs in Fenland rather than two up, two down little boxes. So I think this this certainly ticks a box for me, and I would be quite happy to support this application. Anyone else got anything to say? No. Can I ask for a proposal then from someone? <laughs> I'd like to propose we go against officers' recommendations and approve this application as we disagree with LP16. Councillor Benny. If officers have been given delegated authority to apply appropriate conditions. Okay. Can we vote on that proposal then that we go against officers' recommendation? Is that will yeah so it's unanimous so that decision is unanimous and we go against officer's recommendation um, i think i'll hand back to you again now we're going to play you we're, we're playing we are we're playing um tennis on this aren't we we're playing application tennis now i'll now hand thank you maureen for that expertly done as usual and i'll hand over to allison to present application F stroke YR 220722. It's a PIP application. Um, it's the end agenda item number 11. So, Alison, please. Thank you, Chairman. This is a residential development proposal for up to nine dwellings, and it's an application for a permission in principle, as the Chair indicated. It's on land east of Medigate Academy, Medigate Lane, with Beach. The applicants are a Mr and Mrs P and K Humphrey, with the agent being Jordan Trundle at Peter Humphrey Associates. The application is before Planning Committee, given the number of representations received, contrary 
the office recommendation. The above slide currently on display shows a red line boundary of the application site. In terms of applying for permission in principle, this is in essence all that the applicant needs to do. They need to put a red line around the site and the local planning authority has to restrict its consideration to location, use and amount of development proposed. Looking at the aerial image, you can see um, the Medigate Academy to the front of the site, um, fronting onto Medigate Lane. There's an area of a darker green immediately preceding the western boundary of the application site. We have a current proposal in which is pending to extend the school field. Um, another point um, which I believe will be picked up on the next slide, this application um, follows on from an application for up to 10 dwellings um, that has been approved. As part of that, there were also highway works that were um, proposed. So you've got the 10 dwellings fronting onto Medigate Lane. The area with the crossed path through it is a tree area. Um, and obviously the application site is red. So moving on to the next slide. So this is the hybrid planning permission that was granted on the adjacent site under 20 And as indicated previously, it includes the highway arrangement. The application site that we're currently considering for, forms part of the broad concepts area for East Woods Beach. The principle of residential development on the land is identified in the broad concept plan. Given that we can only um, consider matters of location, use and an amount, we have to restrict comments to this. I must admit, I forgot to give your update from Kingsland and West Norfolk Borough Council. Given that the allocation is a cross-boundary one, um, there's been um, fringe allocation F3.1. Um, they've come back and, and they don't wish to object to the scheme, subject to the Fen and District the Fen and District Council being content that the proposal would not prejudice the delivery of the overall allocated site in accordance with the agreed broad concept plan. In the officer report, um, it's indicated that the land that's been highlighted is land that's identified as residential development. The densities are lower than the plan we're seeking to achieve. I think we can clearly say that the principle of residential development in this location is acceptable when just applying um, amount, use and location. Obviously, as with everything, the devil's in the detail and that will come in along at the technical detail stage. So today it's for members just to consider whether or not they are minded to support the application, the officer's recommendation to grant the um, permission in principle. This is a view looking south towards the access site, and this is looking south from the public byway. Yeah, so evaluation of the pit must be restricted to the issues highlighted. The site forms part of the East Woods Beach Board concept plan. We can only consider the scheme on the basis of location, use and amount. So there are no grounds to resist the grant of permission in principle. Thank you. Yeah, thank you once again, Alison. Rather surprisingly, there are no speakers on this application, so therefore I invite members to put questions, clarifications to officers. So, uh, Councillor French, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thanks, Alison. Um, it's already got permission for 10. So this nine, is this an additional nine? Yes. 19? Yeah, the 10 is the frontage site which was the hybrid application, which committed the road detail and the access highway, the highway improvements on Medigate Lane. So this is an additional nine. Um, nine is the maximum that you can apply for, uh, up to nine is the maximum you can apply So for. we've got 19 going in there, so are we getting any section 106s? Or is this one that we've been crafty and split it by 10 by oh, nine? Not. I believe that we would consider issues such as that under the technical detail. If it was a follow on scheme by the same applicant and triggered those policies, we would consider it. But 
as I said, we can only look at use, location, and amount. Yeah, I, I realise that, Alison, yeah. because obviously everything's technical. Yeah. Um, but I certainly, um, if if that is the case, we are entitled to section 106. The only comment I, I will make, and I know it's not on the table at this time, uh, the school is going to be increased by 60 uh, pupils. Um, uh, county council councillors in this area have been fighting for that since 2017 because there is a, a great need for that. Um, so I just hope it won't have a detrimental effect onto the school because there will be an additional 60 pupils there. Um, I understand an application from the county went in and it has been, I believe it's been withdrawn, I'm not sure. Uh, but certainly there is a need and it will be coming. Yeah, I brought that to Council French, I brought at the same point at the Chairman's briefing this morning. Um, so I think that's taken into consideration because, as I said, the Wisbridge members have been fighting for this for uh, Councillor Hoy in particular for a couple of years now. So 2017. Sorry? 2017. Yeah, well, I can only remember a couple of years back. I'm getting older now. But it's certainly a, a long period of time. So, okay. Any Anybody got any uh, more questions to officers? No? Looks like you're the alone one, Councillor French. So, we'll move on then to the debate. Councillor Benny's going to do it, and I think I'll come in then, probably. Um, I, mean, I can't really see. We've got so little to look at that there is a lot to debate on here. Um, I think officers and members are fairly, fairly agreeable on this one. Um, I mean, yeah, what is there to talk about? Is it acceptable? It's got a recommendation to approve on it or to grant, and um, I think we really should move to recommendation or sorry to uh, uh, for you to ask for a proposal on this one unless any members got anything pressing they'd like to add i'm going to ask the question anybody else want to add to that debate councillor topgood yeah uh, thank you chairman um you know, i have reservations about this this scheme especially with the expansion of the school um and also the state of the roads down there okay but i can't see any reason on the table at the moment for turning it down. Perhaps when more detailed plans come in and they come back to us that there'll be issues then. But at this stage, as Councillor Benny says, I, I can't see any reason for turning it down. No wise words, Councillor Topgood. Anybody else want to add to the debate before we go into asking officers if they want to sum it up? The debate's finished. Nick, no, Alison, no. So I'm looking for a proposal on this scheme. Councillor Topgood. Okay, so um, we've got a, we, we've got a proposal by Councillor Topgood uh, to go with officer recommendation. I think Councillor Clark is is going to second that. So with that, we'll go go with the vote on that proposal to go with officer recommendation to approve the scheme. Please show hands. Thank you. Yeah. So that application has been approved. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Chairman, we're just getting the case officer. Uh, oh, so oh, we'll have a micro stop for a moment. Okay.
Thank you, Chair. Um, there's no update to this application. Um, as you can see, the application is for change of use of land to a traveller site involving the sighting of one mobile home and one touring caravan, the erection of one day room and the formation of an access. The site is located on Sea Dyke Bank, just outside of Murrow. It's to the west of the Sea Dyke Caravan Park um, that is a traveller site run by Finland District Council. Um, and it's um, a few, uh, several metres to the east of the smaller caravan private um, traveller sites that you can see on the location plan there. Um, this plan shows the proposed day room to the top left of the drawing, fairly modest scale building that would be appropriate um, for the scale of the site shows the proposed access to the um, bottom part, bottom left of the drawing. And then the, the static caravan will be located towards the rear of the site and the touring caravan um, will be located on the hard surface that's proposed towards the front of the site. There'd be a grass area that would be used um, as an amenity space for the occupant of the caravan. Um, the photos are fairly self-explanatory. Um, this is the site looking from Sea Dyke Bank Road. And then the bottom right-hand corner is, is looking up the road, obviously. Um, there's a, there's, you'd be able to see a telegraph pole that's on the site on the top right-hand corner photo. Um, there's a sort of a bank between the site and the adjacent council-run caravan park. There's a drainage ditch that you can't see on the photos that runs along the rear of the site. The application has been accompanied by sufficient information that demonstrates that the proposed occupants would satisfy the definition of gypsies and travellers uh, within the national planning policy. And on the basis of that, the principle of the development is considered acceptable. We also consider that the proposal is acceptable with regard to the design, character, appearance and impact on residential amenity um, and suitable landscaping conditions would be imposed if the permission were being recommended for approval um, that could help assimilate the site into the surroundings. The site li lies within flood zone three. However, the council can't currently demonstrate that it has a five year supply of traveller sites, nor does it have an up-to-date gypsy and traveller needs assessment. On that basis, we would consider that the sequential test element um, to do with flood zone three would be passed. However, it's the officer's opinion that insufficient information has been submitted to demonstrate that the site could be made safe over its lifetime. We've also looked at the issue of whether the site would add to um, the current uh, number of pitches that are in the vicinity and whether this would cause dominance on the nearest settled community. We've assessed the area using a half a kilometre radius so that it avoids um, going into the more built up area of Murrow because this area is much more of a sparse character than the um, built area of Murrow. There's currently 21 authorised pitches within a half a kilometre radius of the site and there's approximately seven um, settled dwellings within that same area. So in the opinion of the officers, um, the development does lead to a do an over-dominance um, of pitches within that area upon the nearest settled community. As I said, the site lies um, within a countryside location and there's a drain that runs to the rear of it. We've not received sufficient information that demonstrates that um, an ecological appraisal has been carried out on the site, which would then point to whether there's any further um, species surveys that might be necessary. And this should be 
undertaken prior to a determination being taken on the application. On balance, therefore, it's considered that the proposal must be recommended for refusal owing to the above issues in terms of um, the site not being made safe for its lifetime and not um, complying with that part of the exceptions test. Dominance on the nearest settled community and the lack of information on the ecological implications as a result of the development. Thank you. Um, Can you hear me? Good afternoon. At present, this land is an eyesore to its locals, with various rubbish often dumped and left. If this application is approved, it would facilitate a much needed home for Mr. Carmen and his family. This scheme wouldn't be dissimilar to its existing surroundings, the adjacent council and traveller site and various privately owned traveller sites. This site also has a nine metre bylaw to the rear, which in its sense dictates only small development potential such as this. We have support from the Gypsy Traveller Liaison Officer, support from the Highway Authority, along with a place obtained at the local preschool and a family tree to show the links of the applicant to the local Cunningham family. This is a very similar application to the approved YR21-0309 at Garden Lane, with Butte St Mary, YR21-0150, sorry, 1501-F, Wolf Lane, Levington, and YR20-0309. 1010F at Seeley Lane in Parson Drove. All of small scale nature, all within a flood zone three, all exist, all adjacent existing traveller sites, and the site is situated within two miles of these. In relation to the flood zone three area, on this occasion, if the committee consented to this application, we can address this issue by installing an emergency loft window for access to the roof in the event of a flood. The a presence of biodiversity, there is no dwelling, there's no trees on site. Um, as you've seen yourselves, it's very sparse um, and it has a drain behind it. If there's any great crested newts, owls or bats, they wouldn't reside in this location. But of course, if you agree, then a condition can be put on the approval to rectify this if the council feel appropriate. I understand what I'm about to say is not a planning matter, but a factor in the applicant's situation. Mr. Carmen is a self-employed and fully and is fully self-sufficient. They will not put a stress on the council services and they are temporarily residing with family until the application is decided. The report mentions half siblings. They are within shared custody with the ex-partner of Mr. Carmen and they attend schools elsewhere. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me and hope we decide to support this application. Thank you. Are there any questions for continue? Are there any questions for um, Ms. Patrick? No? Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite members to um, put questions to officers. Are there any questions? Councillor Marks? Thank you. We've heard there's a shortage of sites, and then we've, we're told there's 21 sites there. Are they regularly, are they full all the time, pitches? Are they full, sort of like week to week? Um, I asked this question of our, our um, uh, person who manages FDC sites um, on one of my applications that came to committee last time. Um, and all of our sites are full and there's a, quite a long waiting list. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions for officers? Councillor Sutton. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, on, on the email we had, as, as we declared earlier on, um, from Mrs. Patrick, um, we was forwarded a letter from the Murrah Preschool. Was officers aware of that, um, where, where they 
um, accept that, that he's got a place, that the child has got a place in the school. Um, I'm not the officer who dealt with the application. I, I wasn't aware of it. Um, we, we had been advised of it, though. Oh, right. so, if I may, yeah, yeah, I was aware that we'd have the letter. Um, I think the only two things I would comment with regard to that is um, it regard is in relation to a preschool place. Um, and whilst you might say I'm being picky, um, it didn't, you know, there was no certainty around how long that place was going to be uh, kept for. There was no date on the letter or anything like that. And in my experience, if you're applying to a, a preschool, um, they say, you know, you, yes, you could attend from term X, um, and then that place is booked because obviously that preschool yeah, doesn't want to suddenly find itself oversubscribed and having to let people down there necessarily, etc. Thank you, Chairman. Are there any more yeah. questions? Yeah. Yeah. Councillor French. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm quite surprised that our travellers officer doesn't have any up to date information on requirements of these um, travelling families. <laughs> There's 22 pitches there which are in the control of Fenner um, District Council. And this is for the proposal of one additional one. Um, and obviously uh, it is for one, one, two in caravan, I believe. Um, I really don't see in that area what difference an additional one will actually make. I, I just cannot understand this. And bearing in mind the failure of Femme District Council not to have up to date information, and you cannot prove you can't have or have not got sufficient land available for travellers. And we're going to get a lot more travellers coming in, and we need to accommodate this. So I'm sorry, I will be going against this um, um, recommendations. Can I just remind you, this is um, still questions for officers. Sorry, my question is, why do we not have this up-to-date information? And please don't use COVID. <laughs> Through you, um, as part of the preparation of the emerging local plan, a, um, a uh, travel needs assessment was commissioned. Obviously, it got hit by COVID. And because the travel communities didn't want us to come on site understandably and we didn't want to go on site for fear of um spreading the disease um and i think a draft version of the report has now been received um and officers are feeding back on that um but the thing to to note in terms of the recommendation in the report before you generally speaking we're not um refusing that this application on the basis of we've satisfied the need requirement. Um, we've acknowledged that we don't have an assessment of need that's up to date. And therefore that does, and as we admit in the report, count in favour of granting planning permission. Um, but uh, on balance, officers have felt that the reasons for refusal outweigh um, the, the, that point that we don't have uh, an up-to-date needs assessment. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I think we can, we're ready to move into debate now. So um, if, if anybody's got something to say, Councillor Topgood. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, we've covered travellers' applications quite a lot over the last few months. And one thing that's clear is that, like the other applications, this one is so that he can keep his family together, all in one place. He's going to have a nice little location. One more permanent caravan's not going to mean anything and one one traveling pitch so you know i i will be going against officers recommendations this afternoon and i will be voting to pass this thank you councillor topgood um i i won't be supporting the application for refusals simply because i don't see how it's in any way different to the one that we passed last time for three travelers in wimbledon and and um, i mean we, we have to be consistent. 
Councillor Mayor. Yeah, um, I just do have a slight concern about the drain at the back and the north level comments and the fact that they must not put any building within nine metres of that drain. And when you take nine metres off the depth of that area, it's very tight, is what I'll say. But I will support um, going for this application, actually, because of what happened last month as well. And we have it all explained to us. And I can't see that we can make fish of one and fail of another. Sorry. Are there any further comments anyone wants to make? Councillor Clark? Yeah, can I just say it was mentioned about the dumping ground there. I travel that road most days and I've seen various rubbish dumped on, on there. I travel, was travelling that way for work using that road. So, yeah, it has been an eyesore and there is a lot of stuff dumped on there. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak or can we move to a proposal? Councillor Tutton? Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I think that we possibly should pass this because I feel that although there is already an overdominance of traveller sites uh, compared to uh, gorgeous sites, um, it's about a third and another one is not going to tip that balance you know so great that uh, you know that, that we should refuse i understand you know why i've sort of done it there are um planning inspectors um decisions that, that support that view um but i think on on the balance you know that that it's right next door to the uh the, the present one i think they can achieve the nine meter um no build next to the main drain and as long as they do um i i, I wouldn't have any problem with it. thank you right so i'm looking for a proposal please that's the french i propose we go against officers recommendations and approve this application councillor mayor thank you yeah. yeah. So we need we need reasons, please, um, Councillor French and mm -hmm. Councillor Mayor. And um, well, we, we we obviously disagree that um, it under LP five, LP fourteen, LP nineteen, um, we interpret them differently, and we feel that um, there is a need um, for an additional um, pitch for this family. Right enough. You okay with that, Councillor Mayor? And can, are, can are I, you okay I, with um, officers? I was just going to say I, I, I would like the condition because obviously the nine meters, um, uh, which kind of, and you know, I've been dealing with flooding for the last <laughs> two years, and I've set up the flooding, um, and I've got this in March at the moment. We're fighting with not fighting, but we're having a negotiation with middle level, but that's north level. Uh, that nine meters is so important it's unbelievable it's not now it's in 10 and 20 years time so please put that as a condition are you happy for um the, the conditions to be dealt with by delegated yeah through you chairman the uh submitted proposal um identifies the um the bylaw extent and all of the buildings are shown as being the right side of that line, not on the wrong side. So there'd be no need for a condition. Okay. Fine. Right. So we need. So um, we need to vote then. So this is to go against officer's recommendation. That's unanimous. So that application has has gone against officer's recommendation. I'll hand you back to Councillor Connor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you once again, um, Councillor Davis. Um, right, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Theresa Nicol again to present application FYR 22075508, agenda item number 13. So when you're ready, Theresa, please. Thank you. Okay, so this is an, an outline application for up to four single storey dwellings involving the demolition of existing buildings, um, which 
mostly have been demolished, hence the part retrospective um, element to this application. Um, and this is located at the Piggeries, Flaggrass Hill Road, the March. Members will probably no doubt recall that this site has been before you fairly recently with a proposal for two storey dwellings that was refused by committee. Um, and the officer report sets out the history of the site and gives a brief reason for previous reasons for refusal. And so the location plan shows the access to the site off Flagrass Hill Road, um, um, the, the area where the proposed dwellings would be located, as you can see, is a rectangular shaped site um, and it's located to the rear of the existing housing stock in, in this area. Um, the area is considered to be outside of the built up area of March um, and so it would be considered to be in an elsewhere location. Um, this is the site plan slash location plan um, showing how the site relates to the surrounding neighbouring properties. As you can see, there's a drain to the east of the site on this occasion. Uh, this is an indicative plan showing how the dwellings might be laid out, um, but this would not form part of your determination except for the location of the access, um, which, which must be in that position because there's no other place where it, it could be. Um, but this plan is just to demonstrate how four single storey dwellings might fit onto the site. Um, as I said, the application, um, the site has been before committee um, with regard to three previous applications. The last one was only last year. Um, and the, the previous one was refused for reason of the principle of the development in terms of the site location being outside of the settlement. Previously, um, it was also refused um, because of visual impact and impact on neighbours because the previous proposal was for two storey dwellings. The current proposal um, for single storey dwellings does overcome some of the previous reasons for refusing the, the last application that came before you. Um, if bungalows were put on the site, clearly this would have a lesser impact on the residential amenity of the, the neighbouring occupiers. Um, however, it doesn't overcome the in principle reason that committee refused the last application, and, and that is because the site's in an unacceptable location outside of the built up area, and in effect is considered to be in the countryside. Um, there's, there's no um, footpaths on the streets that give people a safe passage into March. Um, so it's considered to be in an unsustainable location. Um, in addition, the previous reason for refusing the development on visual grounds also referred to the pattern of development in this area. Um, and there's, there's no back plan residential development in this particular location. It's all frontage development. Um, so this does go against the pattern of development, albeit the bungalows are preferable to two-storey dwellings. The previous refusals of permission are material considerations which should be afforded significant weight. Um, there's no material change in circumstances, either in the geography of the area or in policy terms, which would lead to an alternative conclusion being made that the principle of development of this site remains unacceptable. Um, and if committee is to be consistent in their decision making, then the officer view is that this application should be refused. Thank you. Yeah, thanks once again, Teresa. We have one speaker on this application. Now I'd like to invite Matthew Hall, of course he's the agent, to make his presentation to committee. You've got five minutes, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Chairman, members, let me speak on this application. 
Members will have noted in the officer's report that there are no technical objections to this application. March Town Council has supported all the previous applications on this site. The site is located in Flood Zone 1 and is in an area of approximately 24 residential dwellings located off Flagrass Hill Road, which links with Creek Road. The majority of this site is covered with concrete hard standings and some former buildings. By removing this, the drainage situation would improve having less impermeable area as on previous applications concerns have been raised by residents regarding localized flooding with the indicative layout we just saw on the screen that we submitted this allows for a far greater permeable area for this entire site all the properties in this area have septic tanks or treatment plants and soakaways for rainwater which is what this proposal would have as well. A drainage condition can be applied to any approval ensuring an engineered design is agreed for the site. Previously, the applicant obtained an ecology report for this site, which was submitted with previous applications, but it could not access all of this site. What's not come out in this officer's report is the applicant obtained a further ecology report that was submitted with the application which following some site clearance where the previous ecology report had been to allow access to the remainder of the site. The recommendations in that report can be implemented as part of a condition. The proposal for this site has been revised, as the officer has said. Concerns were raised by members and adjacent properties regarding large two-storey dwellings. This proposal is now for single-storey dwellings only. Officers on the previous application also raised concern regarding the visual conflict with bungalows to the front of the site and we've shown to match in with single storey dwellings. The applicant has gone away and listened to what members have said and neighbouring concerns. He's reduced the dwellings all to be single storey and we agreed with the officer during the application that the description would be amended to single storey only. A further ecology report is undertaken on the site. We've had two now, and there are no technical objections to this application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Hall. Members, questions, clarifications to Mr. Hall? If you've got any, of course. Mm, I don't think, I think you've got it quite well there, uh, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Members, questions to officers? No questions, clarifications to officers? Okay, I'll just finish that now then. So members, I'm going to invite you to uh, debate the application. So who'd like to kick this off? Councillor Benny, thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I remember when this came here before. And from memory, I remember that a lot of the members' concerns were the two-storey buildings. I'm very pleased to see this application come back with single story dwellings on that has alleviated my problems or no, no, my, my problems my my concerns about this but i think actually last time i i did vote for it to go through before um i think the the applicant has gone away he's listened to what we said from where it came on when the, when the previous application came in he's listened to what we've said but as a committee if we make not maybe recommendations but if we pass comments and somebody comes back and addresses those comments i think we should be supporting the application um march town council on this occasion haven't commented but they have uh, supported the application on or on the previous applications on this site and as i was busy reading this at six o'clock this morning and reading through my planning information um and i thought about the, the fact that it hasn't got a footpath how many people who live in this this area don't have a car? There are people who don't have a car, but you don't buy a house in Flaggrass Flaggrass Hill. You you wouldn't buy one if you didn't have a car. So the connectivity is already there. And I look down my street, and there is nobody in my street that doesn't have a car. The house next door to me has two people. The house next door has five vehicles. The house next door to that has two. And most vehicles, most most houses have more than one vehicle. And I think to 
you know, turn these four nose bungalows down, they will make good homes for somebody. And I feel that the applicant has gone away, listened to what we said, and has, has, has met or look, looked as best he can at addressing the concerns of the committee. And I feel it would be wrong of us to then turn around and just refuse this after he's done the work that in some ways we suggested that maybe he should go away and do. So with this one today, I will be supporting this application. It's, it's in flood zone one. Um, you know, we, I went to the site and I expected it to be nice and clear and, and it, it looks looks like Beirut, to be truthful, with all the broken concrete and everything laying around there. Um, and the ecology has been addressed and I really have no problem with this. So I, I think that, you know, I, I certainly will be supporting this application today. I felt that it had merit last time and I feel that the concerns have been addressed. So I will be supporting this application today. Councillor French. Um, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I was very surprised to see that Marchstone Council no response received because that is very, very unusual for Marchstone Council. Uh, I did check with the town clerk this morning for the reason. Um, and my understanding, because we have our meetings the first Monday and the Monday and the planning meeting the third Monday, we somehow managed to miss the deadline date. What happened? I don't know. But he did tell me on previous uh, recommendations from the town council, it was to approve, including the, the two story ones um, last year. Um, I know this site fairly well, it is part of my county council division. Uh, there are other dwellings past this site that have been built, and they have been there for many, many years. And I think, you know, as Councillor Benny said, um, the agent was asked to go away, look at things, and he's done that. And I think, you know, I will be supporting um, this application. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Range. I think I've listened to what Councillor Benny and Councillor French has, has, has said, and I think, and I'm not going to reiterate what they said sentence by sentence, but I, I feel um, that I will be supporting this application because, as Councillor Benny said, those who are living down Flagrouse Hill will not will be they will have a car um it, it, it you know it, they're not going to walk to tesco's they're not going to walk up town are they so they're going to have some mode of transport so and it's out of town so you know I, I, as i said i won't go into everything but i am gonna my more i'm mindful at the moment that i'm going to go against officer recommendation to go and approve this application thank you I think uh, I think I was going to just reiterate what you've just said. I'll say it time and time again in this this council meeting is that we are a rural community. We do have rural areas that don't have buses, don't have cars. So do we just not build in those areas? You, you can't just keep adding to the town. You know, you have to build in other places as well. And people who buy that, as Councillor Benny said, people who buy there will have cars because they know they're going to somewhere where they can't use public transport or walk. So you know, I'll, I'll be going against officers' recommendations as well. Well, in my, my view is there's no, in the centre of March, there is nowhere really, as in Chatteris, that you can actually build. So I think, you know, I, I think we've got to build out. And, uh, you know, so I'm not going to reiterate what I said, but they To, uh, thank, you, thank you, Chairman. Um, as the case officer um, mentioned in her presentation, um, the committee determined the last application, and one of the reasons that you refused the application was on the matter of principle. So, in terms of any proposal that we get to grant plan permission, contrary to the officer recommendation, an explanation needs to be given as to um, why. Uh, it's now been viewed differently, Chad. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, no more to add to that. Um, Theresa, no. Uh, yeah. I, would, like to, I uh, would say that I've not had any ecology information, so that is not correct. There's no ecology information been submitted as part of this application. 
Um, and as far as I could see, it wasn't on the previous application either. So well, if it has been done, we have not received it. Okay. Well, um, could, Councillor could, French. Could, yeah, could we have a point of clarification from the agent, please? Yeah, I think I think it's a bone of contention, this or could be. Um, it's unusual again, but I will chair, use chairman's discretion again. Please answer Councillor French's. Uh... Unless I'm wrong, when we submitted it, it was a report by Howard Hillier, who visited the site. Uh, we were asked for it at validation. When I looked late Friday, it was on the public access. The report that we submitted, the one, the previous application, which we did not do, which was uh, refused to commit in October, their ecology report was also on the public access by Philip Parker. So we did submit an ecology report at the start of this application, Howard Hillier. Mr. Mm -hmm. Barnes, check on the public access, or wrong, but we didn't, so I've had one paid for it. And it was asked for validation. So you're saying you've had one? So you're you're saying you've had one then? Yes, definitely. Categorically? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, Councillor French, you want to come yes, back on um, Well, obviously, you know, we, we need to be believing what our officers say as well. There must be a communication error somewhere. So can we get that checked out to see what um, what happened if that came in? And for some reason, it's, you know, it's not been picked up. OK. You know, your, our officers are saying they didn't see it. Agent is saying so it's, it's both conflicting. So, you know, somebody, there must be a communication error somewhere. OK. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Mr. Hall. Um, if we can just hold on a sec, Councillor Sutton is looking on the is portal. He? Yeah, we can hang on. Councillor Sutton's a wizard with that computer. It's got to be there somewhere. I would have thought if, Council, if Mr. Hall says that it is. Okay. Well, if ecology is not a reason refusal, that's not on, that's not on the agenda, is it? No, that's not the point. If our office is saying they didn't receive one, and the agent is saying somebody must be in conflict. Okay, so we've cleared that up basically, haven't we? So thank you, Mr. Hall, for that. So with that bearing in mind, um, I don't, have you got any more questions, Teresa? Because you, you did come in with that one. No, Nick, you haven't got any more. So we're going to, I'm looking for a proposal. Councillor Benny, thank you very much for that. Um, well, whatever I'd it like may to be. propose that we go against officer's recommendation on this and approve it. Conditions to be agreed with officers. Um, I would go that the in the previous application it was turned down because it was deemed unsuitable. The uh, that was only by that committee, it wasn't by this one. And I supported this application the last time, so I thought it was right before, and I think it's right this time. Um, I, the concerns about the height of the building has been dropped to single story, so I feel that has probably addressed the concerns of maybe other members that were on the committee at the time who maybe voted against it but now feel if they vote this way and we'll find out in a few minutes um, that that makes a difference to the proposal and uh, on LP16 that is a subjective um, yes. thing and I feel that that's just a difference of opinion between members and officers nothing personal um, it's just a difference of opinion and that difference of opinion means a, a different outcome of answer yeah, that's a very comprehend. That's a very comprehensive uh, um, of what you said there. So I'm happy with that. To be fair, so we've got a proposal on the table to go against officer recommendation. It's proposed by Councillor Benny. Councillor French is waving frantically that she wants to second it. <laughs> oh, we are well. Well, well you indicated to me that. Sorry. So with that, um, with go on, Nick. conditions, with conditions, I know what Council French is going to say. So I'll sorry. lay, I'll lay. Sorry, sorry. One of those conditions would have to be an archaeological report, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
but the conditions, and I'm going to beat Councillor French to the punch here, don't want to be that onerous, okay, or, or certainly fair. I think we have to say. So with that in mind, to go against officer recommendation. I, I would say, I, I do know that that part uh, down there um, is part of the old Roman road. So yeah. something maybe down there. That's fine. Yeah. If, if there needs to be an archeological. I remember that. Yeah, you do. You, well, yeah. I'm not saying you're that old Councillor French, but <laughs> but anyway, we're joking apart. Um, yeah, so if that's a condition for, a, a, you know, a, we need archeological dig or whatever we do, well, we do. But with that, so we've got a proposal by Councillor uh, Benny, uh, to go up against officers' recommendation, secondly by Council French. Can we at last take a vote on that, please? Uh, uh, Those against? One. That application has been approved. Thank you very much, members. So I'm just going to hand over to my able deputy here for the next application, a conditions application. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, please? At the last planning meeting, we had a, <clears throat> a number of speakers, and I did suggest that we went back to what we used to do, that all public speakers' applications are taken first. And where there's no speakers, they were taken at the end of the agenda. Can you please look into that? I'm not talking about that. We had others when we didn't have speakers that went before. But you, you do know where we have speakers so you can juggle about. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll hand over to Nick Harding to present linked applications FYR 220217LB and FYR um, 220218F as agenda item number 14. Thanks, Nick. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, the committee resolved to approve the two applications at uh, an earlier meeting of the committee and officers. Uh, in accordance with committee's requests, uh, drew up a set of conditions and those were consulted on and we have feedback um, expressing concern about conditions 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 and hence this report is uh, back before you for your consideration of the proposed conditions. So I will focus the presentation purely on the conditions of concern. So if you turn to page 104, just check my glasses. So, sorry, 194. Yeah. I need to go to spec savers. Um, that's where the relevant conditions begin uh, at, towards the bottom of that page. So condition 10 uh, asks for details of any paint to be used on the outside outside of the building. And that's purely to ensure that um, the paint selected doesn't go on to damage um, the brickwork of the listed building. So it, in our view, that's a, a completely um, logical um, condition to apply. And if that condition um, weren't uh, imposed, then um, the risk is that the building could be damaged and ultimately it could be to the detriment of the, the occupier. Um, condition 11 relates to uh, the materials to be used. And when you have a listed building, it's often the case that the uh, materials used and techniques used to build that property uh, are a feature that made that building special in the first place and um, ended up or contributed towards uh, that building being identified as being of national importance and hence listed. And the purpose behind that condition is to make sure that uh, we are advised as to what materials are going to be used so that we can ensure that those buildings are compatible with the building's uh, materials um, as they exist already. And that any uh, new materials introduced are appropriate and won't go on to cause uh, physical damage to the building. So for example, um, old buildings are generally speaking very breathable. And if you end up sealing the building through the use of modern materials, uh, that can cause uh, poor quality of habitation within that building through condensation, so on and so forth. So that's you know, why we are proposing that condition. Um, condition 12, um, the condition requires the use of metal rainwater goods because that is period correct uh, for that listed building rather than uh, plastic. Condition 13 requests window details. The appearance of a window in a listed building is more often than not um, a key part to the um, physical quality of that listed building. So if you were to introduce uh, an inappropriate window design made out of inappropriate materials, then that would impact negatively on the quality of the heritage asset. And finally, um, 
there's a list in that condition that identifies certain um, features that are known within the building uh, that we're seeking to have retained. And again, this comes back to the issue that uh, the building we know uh, contains certain features which are important and integral to the quality of that building and the reason why it was listed and hence uh, our desire to see those retained. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. We have um, one speaker, Councillor Murphy, who was the proposer for the um, application. I should have turned this way around. <laughs> I don't know if it's better or worse, to be honest. Right. Um, uh, uh, what I would like to do now is I'd like to issue a statement so it's clear to the Chatteris Town Council and the people I represent in Chatteris that I will not be speaking on this application as a planning member. I have been advised about speaking against the conditions as they are detrimental and preconceived to the officer's decisions. Obviously, there is no longer free speech or common sense prevailing, but hey ho, that's the way of the world today. As I previously said, these are my opinions and my opinions only. I am not against conserving buildings per se, but single small properties such as this, I believe there has to be some give and take, working together for the betterment of the property. When I read the, when I read the conditions to be imposed in this property, I was staggered. No wonder developers shy, developers shy away from restoring these properties and let them fall into disrepair. There is no way they can afford to renovate to this degree to be able to resell and no one can afford to purchase a property with these conditions. I can see the reasons to preserve the general exterior look of the building, which the developer is happy to do, and I totally agree. But, with, but when it comes to the windows, the doors, the drain spikes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, does it, does it does go on more. And there are a lot of these et ceteras, as in the conditions, it is ludicrous. They, that these are replaced and that they are in the 1980s, uh, 80, sorry, 1800s, and should be replaced like this in perpetuity. Nobody can live like this. This is in this day and age. People want comfortable and stress-free maintenance. It's possible to be able to undertake conditions like these, of this type of conditions, where implemented, implemented in Chatteris House years ago, when this was turned into six apartments and four houses. But you cannot do this in a single property, as we have in front of us today. You just can't do it. As I said before, over the years, what we need is a little common sense, but I realize this is not a planning reason or matter. Mr. Chairman, I refer back to the reasons why I support this application backing up Chatteris Town Council. Visual impact, scale, character, and the appearance, and NPPF 185C, NPPF 191, NPPF 192C, NPPF 195B and MPP F 195D, which can all be taken with ambiguity. Thank you very much. Do we God shining his light on that? Um, do we have any questions for Councillor Murphy? No, thank you. Right, can I invite members now to put questions to officers, please? Just regarding the paint of the building, I mean, we all drive past, or lots of us have driven past it, it's in a derelict state. We're saying we've got to specify paint and stuff. Surely most of it's going to be, have to be re-rendered anyway. Why then, if it's got a new render, are we then specifying what paint and stuff like that? If it's going to be wattle and daub, I could understand it's going to be breathe, breathing texture, but we seem to be getting hung up on paint, on you know doors and stuff like that. 
to be fair, by the time this all gets sorted, the building's going to fall down. Uh, through you, Chairman, if you use paint which ends up sealing the outside of the building, then there's a good chance that you'll end up with damp and condensation within the building. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, let me choose my words carefully. Um, if this committee is foolish enough to not agree these conditions, in my view, it will have a huge implications to many, many other already lived in properties across Spenham, i.e. windows, doors. You know, if, if, if we don't insist on having this put right, then we leave the door open for applications to come in from other properties. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, through you, Chairman, um, it would be uh, considerably more difficult for us to uh, apply conditions of this nature on other buildings because this particular case would, if it does um, have those conditions deleted, that would be um, consistently raised with us as officers, I'm sure. Do we have any more questions for officers? Okay, we've moved to debate. Um, before we do, I'd just like to remind members that we granted these applications at the last meeting, and it's only the conditions that are being considered at this meeting. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand, Councillor Benny. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, I, I look at these conditions and the, the ones that Nick's pulled out, you know, the paint, truthfully, is quite a sensible one. And it's neither, is that a very costly one either? If you're going to buy 20 quid tin of paint and it's 40 quid, it's only 20 quid difference. That's not a major thing. The windows, ideally, you'd like to put double glaze back in, but that ain't going to happen. You, you, you can't do that. So that goes with owning a listed building. You have to keep it. Yeah, and you. Yeah. yeah. I, looking at paint, I can see the point of paint. If it's going to be an old building and it's going to go back together, I, I, I agree with Nick. It needs the right paint because any building needs to breathe and that could cause damage and it would damage the living quality of somebody who's there. It would be nice to put double glazed windows in there, but we can't do that. It has got to be windows that are similar. The conditions that we've got, we're going to have to have aluminium or iron guttering put up. Well, from my recollection that I've been trying to think, I'm fairly sure I have plastic rimway guttering on. But if that's a condition, the cost is the same labour cost to put whatever you put up there as, as, as is. It's again, it's only the price difference between plastic and cast guttering it is more but on the scale of the job it's not a lot of money difference i mean i look at having to have a survey done of a, a level three historic understanding historic buildings i mean that that is where the real money is going to go in this and these are the things that are going to stop this development from coming forward and as much as i'd like to say scrap the lot we can't we, we, we can't do that it is a grade two listed building. It was bought as a grade two listed building. And when you start doing work on it, it becomes expensive. I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But I think to go against something like recording on a level three historic England's understanding, we are going to be challenged on that. And we are going to be fine for doing that. So as a council, we can't. If somebody bought a grade two listed building, it must part of the cost of doing the job. I think the, the points that Nick's highlighted um, are actually fair. I agree with the paint, the windows, as much as I'd like to see UPVC in there, we can't put them in a, in a, in a grade two listed building. They've got to go back. Keeping the fireplace in, um, it is a feature of the building. So what do we take out of here? And as much as I don't like to see conditions that are restrictive to a project being brought forward, especially a project like this that is desperately in need of some work doing to it, and we want to get a quick resolution to it. Unfortunately, 
cannot see where we can cut these conditions out that are going to make the financial difference between whether this scheme goes ahead or not. It either will or it will not. Like I say, I don't like them, but I can't see where we can do anything other than agree these conditions. Councillor Topgood. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, looking at these conditions, as somebody who's dealt with listed buildings a lot, um, there's nothing there that I think is unreasonable. Like, like Councillor Benny says, some of it is going to cost a lot of money to study, but I can't see any other way around that at all. Um, <clears throat> the paint, people don't realise what damage the wrong paint can do to a, a listed building. It retains water, like internals as well, you know, lime water because of it needing to breathe. Um, I think we keep these conditions and go more. Anyone else want to add to the debate? Councillor Marks? I hear what everybody's saying. I, I, I agree in principle. However, I, my, my biggest concern is that this will again would be like a lot of other properties in Chatteris, March, that will just not get spent on. And at the end of the day, unless the council actually then has some teeth, and this should never have been allowed to get in this condition in the first place. So four years ago, they should have gone to the to the owner and said, you need to do this. We're just going to allow this. This will take another year, 18 months, two years, and then the property will fall down. And then I'll come back and say, you know, it, there is nothing there viable to do. We're on a double-edged sword here. We can't, we can't win either way. Councillor Sutton. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the cost of these things, they are, they are huge. But, but the thing with this particular application, the applicant bought it, as Councillor Benny said, as a grade one or two listed building, whatever it is, two, is it? Yeah. Um, so he must have known what what was ahead of him because if he didn't, then you know he, he's not he's not done due diligence upon his own company or, or his own personal circumstances. So, as I said, if we're foolish enough to you know not go along with officers' recommendations here, I think there's going to be massive repercussions down the road. Um, and I think this, you know, I, I've I've said about it before, and I'll say it again. We shouldn't be poking our nose in just as a very blunt point uh, in conditions. I've been on this planning committee for too long, perhaps most will say, um, <laughs> but maybe 12 years, 12, 11 years. Never once, not once, as any member of this planning committee or previous committees, brought up issues of concern with conditions when it's been gone for approval. Not once. The only time it comes a concern to members, and we hear this not too onerous, too many times, I don't believe officers make it onerous. What officers have got to do is put conditions on that are um, aligned with any other condition that if, if it was you know, done for approval. That's what I believe they do. That is what I believe we should support. And I genuinely believe that it should be down to, I think on one occasion I've asked to see um, conditions, but that was only because I thought they weren't going to be onerous enough. And in fact, Alison was the case officer and I did recommend that we went over and above what they were saying. Um, I just don't think we should be. We shouldn't be there. We we're here to make decisions on land use, and the conditions should be left to officers. That's my final comment. Councillor French. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I actually agree with um, Councillor Marks with regard to the length of time this this building. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Um, Mike Charlie, we should have said years ago. Um, get, slap a section 215 and, and then if they did nothing a 216. We did it very recently and I would like to see more of that happening uh, when we see the state of some of the buildings across the whole of Fenwick. Um, 
there has to be conditions, and I'm sorry to disagree with Councillor Murphy, um, but you know, he, he's bought whoever it is, they bought the building, they've got the planning permission, they're lucky to get that. Um, so now they've got to adhere to the conditions if they're going to bring it back into a reasonable state. The most onerous condition there to me seems to, I mean, the paint, the windows, all of that. It's always when you get to the point of having to use consultants that you think, ah. Oh. So is there any way that the applicant would be able to work with the conservation officer to um, limit the cost of that report for them? So i.e. could they have like specific areas that, I don't know, I'm just going to... We haven't got one. I uh, know. Uh, There's a um, best practice and standard that a um, conservation consultant would have to work to. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, depending upon when that work is done, we not sure whether or not we're going to have a conservation officer in post at the moment in time. Yeah. Okay, I think um, everyone's done with the debate. Uh, let's move to a proposal then, please. Councillor French. Move the recommendations. That's the top good. You second that. Very interesting debate, that. Um, oh, yeah. Just move to recommendation. Yeah. So can, we need a vote then on the second application. So we go with, with the proposal is, again, that we go with officer recommendation. So same proposer, same seconder. That's fine. Can we vote then, please? Those against? <coughs> Those abstaining? Thank you. Back to you, David. Yeah, well, yeah, very interesting debate. Um, we are where we are, as they say. Well, before I hand over to, to Theresa Nicholl to present application FYR 220390F, agenda item number 15, I would like to bring the members' attention. There is a confidential appendix to this application. In the interest of openness and transparency, we would wish to continue with considering the application in its public domain. But if members feel it's necessary to discuss or debate this confidential appendix in detail, or the applicant feels it's necessary to refer to it or read it out, the contents of this confidential appendix, it will be necessary to go into confidential session. You will need to indicate to me if you wish to discuss or debate the confidential appendix at any time during the consideration of this application. OK, so with that. Um, I, I can go on, but just let's let's just see how we are. So, Teresa, do you want to make this presentation and see where see where it leads us? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, there is an update uh, to this report. Um, we've had a further letter um, received stating that further domestic paraphernalia has been added to the site, including a bench fencing and ornamental planting. Um, the letter also states that the fencing erected does not class as permitted development because under um, the 1995 order, development rights are foregone as the use on site is unauthorised. Um, basically, in, in summary, if if the if the land is being used for an unauthorised purpose, it doesn't have permitted development rights. Um, the officer response is that the introduction of further domestic paraphernalia on site further contributes to the encroachment of a proposed domestic garden into the open countryside. As detailed within the officer report. The domestic garden area will urbanise the open countryside to the significant detriment of the character and visual means of the area. 
The introduction of such would also set a precedent which would result in the creation of further cumulative harm in the open countryside. Uh, it's not clear from the further letter where the additional fencing is located. However, it should be noted that a 1.5 metre post and rail fence has been detailed on the submitted site plan enclosed in enclosing the application site. So that, that's the update. So this application is um, a retrospective application for the change of use of land, um, which previously had been in use as agricultural land for domestic purposes. And it also includes the erection of a chicken run and the formation of a pond. As you can see from the um, location plan, um, the land is located to the rear of the applicant's property and two of the neighbouring properties. Um, the, the land to the west going up the side that shows pedestrian access is a public footpath. Um, and then the sort of the part going across and joining on onto the site is an in, as I understand it, an informal footpath public footpath extends further north. Um, the, sorry, Hannah. Uh, the photograph shows the site before, obviously before the residential houses were developed, um, but, but obviously it shows the land to the rear in agricultural use. Um, this is the proposed site plan. Um, you can see the various um, elements that the proposed chicken run um, is in situ and it's situated to the rear of number five, Ascom Row. Uh, the pond, as mentioned, is situated at the rear of the site. It's that sort of kidney shaped feature you can see. Um, the rest of the, the features on there are various types of planting. Um, I would like to point out that the plan states that the area at the rear of number four and number eight is garden land. Um, that is not the case. We have not granted any permissions for other changes of use of that land to garden land or domestic purposes. Uh, this shows um, the proposed chicken run. Um, it's 9.6 metres long by three metres wide. Um, and it shows the, the post and rail fencing that's to be erected. Um, this shows the profile of the proposed pond area. It's considered that the cumulative impact of the change of use, the erection of the chicken run, and the formation of the pond, um, as, as well as other domestic paraphernalia that could be put within this area should this application be approved contrary to officer recommendation would result in an urbanised encroachment into the open countryside and it would significantly detrimentally impact on the character and vision and amenity of the area. Um, I would point out to members the footnote that's attached to policy LP12, the Rural Areas Development Policy. Um, it defines the developed footprint of the village as the continuous built form of the settlement and it excludes individual buildings and groups of dispersed or intermittent buildings that are clearly detached from the continuous built up area of the settlement. And it also excludes gardens, paddocks and other undeveloped land within the curtainage of buildings on the edge of the settlement where the land relates more to the surrounding countryside than to the built up area. Agricultural buildings and associated land on the edge of the settlement. Uh, this site clearly fits within that definition. Um, and so it's outside of the built up area. And therefore in planning times, it, terms, it must be considered as countryside. Um, officers consider that the introduction of a domestic garden in this location would set a precedent for the creation of further cumulative harm. Um, quite often you might hear officers say that um, it's not correct to say that there's a precedent because each application is considered on its own merits. Um, but in this case, 
the neighbouring land is so similar in circumstance that it would not be possible or logical for us to be able to refuse further changes of use to the adjacent land if this application is approved. As such, the development is considered to be contrary to policy LP12 and policy LP16. Um, and it's recommended for refusal. I would just finally like to say that if if members uh, were minded to consider approving the application, the land would become part of the residential curtilage and therefore it would have permitted development rights um, as if it was garden land attached to the dwelling. And obviously there's certain things you can put in a garden that aren't development that would not require planning permission. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that, Theresa. We have three sets of speakers on this application. First, I'd like to invite Andy Brand. He's an objector to make his presentation to committee. When you are nicely seated, you have five minutes, Mr. Brand. Thank you. Okay, thank you and good afternoon, Chairman, members. My name is Andy Brand and together with my, my wife, Catherine, and our four daughters, we live at Five Arscombe Row, which is the property which is most impacted upon by this retrospective planning application. By way of background, both myself and, and my wife, Catherine Brand, are town planners. I worked for Fenland Council for five years between 2002 and 2007. And Catherine has worked for the council for a full professional career. Catherine is currently validating planning applications for the council and so has no influence on the decision making functions of the planning department. I've also been appointed recently as a volunteer project manager for the Doddington Neighbourhood Plan Group. That group is seeking to promote sustainable development whilst protecting the character of the village. We consider therefore we are well placed to comment on planning policy matters. Before summarising our objections and has been mentioned already, I'd just like to note that the, um, the, the drawings that have been submitted with the application are not correct in terms of the land to the east and the west. That plan also references to the north mega plants, but that business is actually located around 400 metres to the north. The proposal before you today clearly conflicts with an important principle of planning policy, the protection of the countryside from uncharacteristic and unnecessary development. That policy position is set out in paragraph 3.3.11 of the adopted local plan and with paragraph 174 of the National Planning Policy Framework. This presumption against the proposed development applies in full against this planning application. The development is unnecessary in the context of local plan policy LP3 and the alleged biodiversity benefits cannot be given weight in favour of the proposal as those works do not themselves require planning permission. The planning officers have correctly also drawn, your, drawn comparisons with an appeal in Coates where a similar proposal was dismissed on the very same basis of the harm caused by this proposal. The Coates appeal site was around one fifth of the size of this planning application. The impacts are therefore inevitably greater in this proposal. Planning law requires that decisions are taken in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The situation here is that there is clear non-compliance with planning policies which have been identified by the planning officers and have been tested at appeal and codes. The council has a legal duty to have regards to this previous appeal decision and to act consistently in its decision making. In our view, the development is unauthorised, unnecessary and, un 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 unacceptable and must therefore be refused planning mission in order to comply with planning law. Having considered planning policy matters, I now wish to speak as a parent. Before undertaking the unauthorised development on the land, the applicant advised that he intend to plant an orchard on the land behind our property. Given that planning permission is not required for planting trees, this caused us no concerns. Our children's play equipment is situated within two metres of the boundary of the application site. It was erected on our garden before the applicant purchased the agricultural field. The play equipment, I've sent some photos in, it's the first one, has a raised platform that is around 1.5 metres high and enables our children access to the monkey bars and slide. The play equipment is plainly visible from the application site and the applicant, the applicant would have been fully aware of its location and use before we purchased the land. The reasons which had not been explained to Catherine or, or I and without any prior discussion, the applicant then decided to erect a chicken enclosure adjacent to our children's play equipment. The enclosure is around two thirds the size of a one bed flat and is therefore excessive in size. It could hold several hundred chickens according to relevant guidance. The view that our children have of the enclosure is shown on the second photograph. The officer's report correctly states that the form use of the site could have resulted in land being grazed. That is correct, but it's not correct to say that the chicken enclosure building could be erected there without planning permission if the land was used for agriculture, which is not being used or sought for. 
We've spoken to many people who keep and have kept chickens and they've made us aware of the potential noise and smell arising from that. We're also aware that they attract vermin. Parish Council highlight this matter as part of the recommendation that planning permission should be refused. We feel that the impacts are unnecessary and if the applicant wished to keep chickens there, then there's no good reason why they cannot be accommodated closer to his property. They were kept within the applicant's garden before the unauthorised development was undertaken. To place them within a few metres of, of where our children play is unnecessary and unacceptable. We also question why the applicant wishes to have the enclosure, a structure that they will walk to and from regularly so close to our children's play equipment. We've already noticed that our children feel intimidated by the building being so close to the area they used to enjoy playing in. The impact upon our children's enjoyment of their own garden is unacceptable and unnecessary in our view. We did ask the applicant to move the structure, but his unreasonable response was that it is not moving. We have not been able to read the applicant's personal circumstances statement, which has been submitted earlier this month. It is unclear to us why this has been submitted so recently. Whilst we have every sympathy for whatever those personal circumstances are, we do not consider that these can be used to justify the grant of planning permission for a development which is unacceptable, contrary to planning law, and has such a level of impact on our family. This planning application is clearly unacceptable in relation to planning policy matters, and it creates unnecessary impacts upon our children's use of their garden. Catherine and I therefore urge you to refuse planning permission. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mr. Brand. Members, questions for Mr. Brand. Councillor Marks. Good afternoon, Mr. Brand. So are you saying if the chicken coop was moved, you would then be happy with the rest of the uh, development there? In terms of being a parent, I would be more, much more happy with that situation. Uh, obviously, in terms of my professional role as a planner, um, the, the land use is unacceptable in my view, and the view of planning officers and obviously the Codes Appeal decision. So it's kind of a split response. Obviously, being a parent is very important, and you know I want my children to be able to use their gun. But apart from the chicken run, it looks like from the, your photograph there were just trees and so basically what you would see in any garden apart from the view you've got of the chicken run with your children you've also got a six foot fence there as well and obviously the angle of that we can't actually judge the height of the, the chicken coop itself but can you actually see the chicken coop we can, when you see, look we, we can see it from our property we can't see it from the ground floor but obviously our children have the elevated um, play equipment which does enable that view, view over um, I mean, the height of it is shown on the, on the application drawings. But when you're in the garden, you can't see it. When we're in the garden, we can't see it. No, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor Benny. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Brown, um, I mean, living next door to a barking dog is bad enough, um, but chickens can be noisy, roosters in the morning and all that sort of stuff, but also the smell. Does this impact your loaf in any way by having these this uh, chicken run? close to your property and your family? At present, there's the chickens have only been put in there very recently, uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, at present, it doesn't. Obviously, the, the, the size of the uh, building could accommodate a number of chickens, obviously. And I think the impact from that would be substantial, in, in my view. So we'd have to wait and see, is, is the position really. It would be, and I, I've suggested that, you know, in my experience for these type of developments, some form of impact assessment would be submitted with the application that's not been submitted. Councillor Benny, you're happy with that. Councillor, if you are, we'll move on to Councillor Sutton. Thank you. I am happy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, uh, probably, I'll, I'll probably know the answer to this because you, you've just said that the chickens have only been there recently, but have you had any vermin, rats, etc., to date? Uh, Neighbours have had vermin in their garden, as far as I'm aware. Um, we've not seen one in our garden just yet. Um, but again, they've not been used for that long. So yeah. again, well, that could have. Could what I'll say is you will have. Thank you. Councillor French. Um, yeah, it was actually a question um, I was going to ask that Councillor Sutton has just asked. Um, yes, Councillor Sutton is right, you will have them. I used to keep chickens and I had to get rid of them because I was fed up with the rats. Um, and I, once you've got them, I'll tell you it's a job to get rid of them. Right. Um, I just need some clarification here, Mr. Brand. I was at the parish council meeting uh, when you did your presentation, and obviously, as you're well aware, I didn't say anything, didn't take part, and just um, just, just 
Chronicles as an onlooker, really, on that one. But the parish council um, did at a recent meeting voted to object this application on the ground that is a re retrospective application. Well, as you well know, a retrospective application has to have the same weight as a, as a, as a, as a, a normal planning application. Okay. Um, and also, it says the council wishes to make further comments. During the discussion, members, which I wasn't there, reviewed the size and location of the chicken run and considered it to be more appropriate if this item was located behind the applicant's property rather than the current position, which is behind the neighbour's uh, property. So, that, yes, they have objected, but one of them didn't mean, hasn't, doesn't mean too much. Um, being a retrospective one, that means same way as you know and the next one means it's only just an informative they'd rather have that but we are where we are and we've got to look at it where we are this afternoon um so just some clarification so you will actually agree with that won't you it's in it's in writing well Lovely. So, any more, any more uh, questions, clarifications to Mr. Brand before we let him go? Thank you very much for that, Mr. Brand. Thank you. Oh, I'm on the face now. I forgot where that is now. Um, where are we? Oh, yeah. That's it. So, I'd now like to invite. To invite, I'd like now to invite Greg Pelling. He's a supporter uh, uh, to make his presentation to the committee. You also have five minutes, Mr. Pelling. Thank you. Okay. Well, I've no, I've no, I've no uh, notification of that, but I'm sure officers can. Uh, bear, oh, it's behind you. Okay, that's that's fine. So I had no notification. That's what you're going to do, but never mind. We're going now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone? Any button? Who away? Perfect. Good afternoon. I'm Greg Pelling. I'm Mr. Brand's neighbour at my house. I'm Mr. Krask's neighbour in field, and I support this application. Here is the layout. Here is why I care. Why I care. The plan for our long term house is to stay there until we are old. This decision has potential for significant impact on our future plans for our field. I want to look at the objections. There is a claim of urbanizing as a result of the plans. I looked at the definition of urbanizing. It says to make urban in nature or to industrialize. So I then checked the definition of urban and that too doesn't match the plans or the application at hand. This feels like a moot point by the very definition. Introduction of a domestic garden was set a precedent for further harm. Quite the opposite. The combined purchase of the land was a protective measure by the residents of Ascombe Road to avoid any housing development to the rear. Picture there would be urbanizing. This is what we all acted to avoid. Trees are not by definition. The objections there is a lot of reference to Fenland plan and specific LPs. I went to dissect and examine some of those. There are plenty of extracts where the Fenland local plan supports the nature of its application. Even in the pretext, there is mentions of biodiversity support as well as the pollution reduction through the plants of trees. Specifically though, the objection is quite right that LP 12 part A subsection C does oppose the application. However, with subsections A, B, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K, 
it has a minimum abides with the cause or often supports it. For example, K, the application would see the land become protection against flooding with the substantial planting. Perfect. Policy LP16, delivering and protecting high quality environments across the district. The objection refers to subsection D. However, unlike the LP12 objection, it is not as clear cut. For example, within subsection section D, it provides resilience to climate change and reinforces local identity. The transformation of what was a pesticide and fertil exhaust sorry, a pesticide and fertilizer exhausted field into a biodiverse array of native planting and oxygen produce, producing trees is a clear counter to climate change. Government policy around tree planting and tax relief available for decarbonisation through tree, tree planting is a biggest demonstration of this. Local identity of Doddington being an attractive leafy green village, as is the feel of a walk around the village, will only be strengthened by the addition of another beautiful garden. Also, no one mentioned LP19, which strongly supports the application with biodiversity and ecological restoration of recreation of habitats. Here is evidence already of LP19 in action. As a result of the works, these animals and insects have returned to and flourished since the work started. All those photos have been taken in the land at the back. This hive that you'll see is in the field. You can see the honeycomb comes in lots of different colours. Next one, thank you. This is an extract from UK beekeeping and shows where different colors come from. A significant amount is from the native planting in the applicant's area. Therefore, I have released a healthy bee plan for 2030, which supports the work done in the garden and the creation of this very habitat. The way the plans support bee colonies gives argument against the LP12 section C defense. Against the plans as it supports the expansion of the existing character of Doddington area and a positive impact for the pollination of the farmland that is specifically mentioned in subsection C. Final, this is the view. This is the view from my garden where I join Mr. Brown's garden. You can see at garden level, at fence height, next to nothing is visible other than the outline at the back of the very field and the tree line, which is what gives the area its character. Nothing is interrupted by what's been done in that garden. This is why I'd like your support. One thing to add, I do have a DEFA license to keep hundreds of chickens and pigs in my field. So any concerns regarding the vermin or smells that may come from the applicant's three hens will be massively outweighed by what I have the right to do right now. Yeah, right. That's a very interesting presentation, Mr. Penning. Members, have you got any questions for him? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it's Councillor Marks first and Councillor Davis then. Sorry, just going back to your last slide. Yes. There are alpacas at the bottom of the garden? No, sheep. The sheep, are they? Alpacas would be more fun. Uh, right, okay. So I'm going to take it they're fed nuts and stuff during the winter. So they're not ours. They're, the land at the back was bought by mega plants yep. when we bought the three sections to stop any potential housing development. Yep. The mega plants plan is to put shy horses there. Right. The ground as it stands at the moment isn't suitable because of the pesticides and things that have gone on it. As I understand it, sheep are more resilient to that the next two years sheep will do their thing in that field after that time that field is then more suitable for shy horses during the winter they're fed nuts and stuff like that as opposed to no idea just, just i don't farm them oh, okay. the farmer turns up in a land driver oh, yeah. just trying to get around this rat thing yeah no um we haven't had any rats from the sheep they did break in and eat my trees but okay that's about it thank you no worries okay that's good. Councillor Davis, would you like to? Um, yes, when we went on the site visit, um, we were obviously able to go into the garden and into the, the land behind. And obviously, we also became very aware that um, gardens alongside were already beginning to be urbanised. So I can see why you would support the application, because you're obviously intending to go the same way. Yeah, so to be honest, until this came up, I wasn't even aware of any issue. All we've done at the moment is erect fence, create a chicken housing that could house up to around about 100 chickens, and we've already created an apiary for bees. Now, uh, my, my knowledge is limited to what I can find online, but the use of chickens, like I say, we have a DEFA license. Bees are both considered to be a domestic activity as well as an agricultural activity. Trees are encouraged for planting and can support any agricultural activity, as will fence. So my understanding at the moment is what we've done lays within the realms of agricultural land usage. Um, but I don't know. I might, get a knock at, I might get a knock at the door next week and find out otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, just 
I think, you know, if I bought a house in Aston Row and then suddenly one neighbour wanted 100 chickens, the other neighbour wanted maybe 200 chickens, maybe some, you know, other animals, that's not what I signed up for is how I would feel. So No, um, but you're talking about an agricultural use. So I got a DEFRA licence on that land as agricultural land for agricultural use for chickens. So actually what we're talking about here by turning it into a garden, we put a limit on the amount of chickens, not allowing me to use my DEFRA license to keep hundreds. So if you wanted to protect those houses from enormous amounts of livestock, granting planning permission is the way to do that. Because if you don't, if you hold back on it, the DEFRA license will allow me to keep pigs. Uh, I think we've got pigs and chickens so far. I don't imagine it'd be tricky to get any other animals. I think you like being threatened either. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's not a threat. It's, my, it's what I'm now entitled to. That's the reality of it. Very interesting, very interesting. We're all learning something today, aren't we? Uh, Councillor Sutton, perhaps you can add something to the mix. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, you're making a big issue about this DEFRA license. How did you come about that? It was a birthday present from my uh, other half. So I've always wanted to keep pigs. Um, she went through the process, um, had to fill in an enormous amount of paperwork. And they were issued with a license with DEFRA for keeping livestock and we have a registered number. We haven't exercised it yet. We haven't looked into purchasing any. You've got, a, you've got a holding number. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've got a number, yeah. Thank you. Is that, have I done the right thing? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey, so we're still, anybody can ask, very welcome to ask any questions of Mr. Pelling, Mr. Topgood, Councillor Topgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> I, I keep bees. Um, I've got four hives. I've also kept chickens in the past. I mean, chickens absolutely decimate garden. Absolutely. Um, don't you think it would have been an idea for the chicken coop to be the opposite end of the field? I would say my personal one is, is, is significantly larger, but it's not covered. So actually, we don't have any stock currently because of the bird flu issue. Um, the one in the application is uh, probably around about 25% of the size of mine. He has three hens. The, as you will know, when, when chickens get their segregated area, you soon know if they're going to overcome the area because the ground gets stripped. In the applicant's area, the ground is not being stripped, and that gives you an indication of just how sparse the chicken population is. Three chickens inside the size that he has, you're not going to see noise, you're not going to see the smells because it really is that limited. And although it can't be, I, I don't believe there can be a condition of planning, the applicant has no desire to get more chickens because actually when we had sort of a fox attack, we offered more to them, but they didn't want them. So it's kind of an issue and I appreciate the objection on the base that there could be a lot of smell. Uh, but I also see from the applicant's point of view, he doesn't have a desire to run a commercial chicken farm. They have three hens for some eggs. Um, it's, it's one of those tricky things I don't think you can legislate against. The reality, but like I say, the reality is we kept, we had 10 at our last count before we uh, got a fox in. And even then, there wasn't a smell issue, there wasn't a rodent issue, and there wasn't a noise issue. No one keeps cock calls, incidentally, because I think everybody acknowledges, even when there's a difference of opinion, that would probably be antisocial. So there's, there's reasonable people working here. So it's, it's quite difficult um, because we are basically in the middle of a, a neighborhood view. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I can see the benefits of the garden. Yes. With the biodiversity and that, but I can also see the objector's point of view. No, I, I totally. I've met with them both individually to try and find a middle ground. Um, unfortunately, I think my attempt at intervention was a little bit late to the party and things had escalated by then. Um, and I, I, the issue, I guess, that you guys now have is I'm not sure there's a way to legislate a happy ending for everyone. Um, and I think the reality is it, it needs to be a gentleman's agreement. And that's not something that gets put in place inside a chamber. Yeah, thank you. No, it certainly doesn't. Councillor Davis, please. Um, yes, can I, I don't, don't know if I can do this, can officers comment at this stage on what permitted development can take place on agricultural land? Is, yep. is that? Yeah, um, yeah because it, it's, this is a bone of contention. Mm. I think we ought to clarify this before we move on. So I'm very happy for any officer to come in there and bring their expert opinion to the table. Thank you. I'm going slightly from memory here, but obviously the application that we are considering isn't for agricultural land, it's for a change of use from agricultural land to garden land. So if permission was granted for the current application, then permitted development rights would exist 
the same as they do for the Kirtleys within any dwelling. So in theory, you could build buildings up to half the area of that garden, um, as long as they sort of met the other stipulations. In terms of agricultural land that this gentleman is talking about, um, it would have to be an agricultural unit, and if there is a holding number issued, it would, to my knowledge, class as an agricultural unit. But because it's going to be, I believe, below five hectares, this gentleman's unit, and it is within such close proximity to dwellings, you would, you would not need permission to keep animals on there because that would be agricultural. Mm -hmm. But you would need permission for any buildings to house those animals. It, That's in line with the advice I was given, because I'm below five hectares, if I wanted a solid building, then it would require permission. You, yeah, one, and one of the, sorry. You're within, <coughs> you're within 400 metres of a protected building, which is any dwelling. So um, whilst, you might be able to keep animals on there as long as the land remains in agricultural use and not garden any any permanent building on there would need planning permission okay so, okay. One so before please, let's just conduct probably so are you before we come back to you yeah, again I of course understand. are you are you happy yep. with the with the answer Teresa's okay. give you okay so mr sorry mr sorry so mr penny one of the difficulties Reading between the detail, if we if we concentrate on this chicken house for the moment, is the construction of the chicken enclosure is walled. Okay, so it's not a solid building; it's effectively a very high fence. The issue then comes is it has to be covered because of current bird flu legislation, which effectively forms a top. Although the top is a netting, it's a netting over a fence construction. So we're really picking into the black and whites here, and again we're we're diving into the the detail between the two people involved in the room. But if it's a chicken pen and it's just then bought made a fence, I, my understanding is that's okay either way because it's nothing more than a fence. We've had to cover the chicken enclosures, hence we don't currently have them because ours is bigger and it'd be a nightmare to cover because of the bird flu regulations coming out of DEFRA. Well, by that definition, if we then put a net over the top, does it become a building? Well, it can't because it wasn't a building to start off with. It's a modification in line with DEFRA. So do you see we're really having to pick this apart? It's getting very complicated, I think. So I don't know. So I'm going to draw this to a close. Has any got any more questions for Mr. Pelly? Yeah. No. Well, thank you very much thank for very endeavouring much. to answer members' questions. It's been very informative. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, right. So I'd now like to invite Kevin Krask, who's the applicant, to make his presentation to the committee. You have five minutes. But before you begin, and this is why I'm speaking now, uh, you'll need to refer or read out the contents of the confidential appendix during your presentation. So if you're going to do that, we'll need to go into confidential session. So are you are you going to read the confident? No. OK, so carry on. Thank you very much. Anyone? Uh, so uh, got my slide up, please, first, before we start the planning. So, that you've got five minutes, yeah. So you're you're quite happy. Slide with up, yeah. There we go. Okay, I'll prompt you to move on if that's okay. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and chair. Uh, in this case, the planning officer has recommended refusal on one point only, as all other aspects of this application have been accepted as being agricultural or not amounting to development or in keeping with a countryside setting. The point in case is purely encroachment of a domestic garden into wide open countryside with detriment to the character of the setting and that the Coates proposal FYR 20.0107F has set a precedent. I would like to highlight that the, applicant conform the application conforms to multiple as aspects of feminine planning policy, which has been overlooked, and how the use of Coates as a reference point is completely invalid. Slide two, please. We acquired this land to protect it from development, and we're working tirelessly to contribute towards biodiversity, enhancing the landscape by ensuring we blend in using native hedges, trees, and planting similar to those in the surrounding landscape, thus uh, retaining the distinctive feminine character as required by the Fenden local plan. And yes, we might have a seat to rest and enjoy the numerous animals now that visitors, all contributing to personal well-being. Next slide, please. 
I've highlighted separately how this proposal facilitates the health and well-being of Fenland residents. Indeed, most of my neighbours who are in support of this application have visited the site and state how much joy they receive from what has been done, particularly increased wildlife they already see, as do many users of the nearby public footpath. Under LP 12 and 16, we are enhancing biodiversity and habitat whilst retaining and increasing natural features of the setting, i.e. trees, hedges, grasses, bushes and the pond all adding to the sustainability of the setting as the planting matures, offering even further habitat. The number of birds and small critters that now drink from our water at our pond is unbelievable and it's magic to observe. If this does not add to local landscape character, I don't know what does. The planning officer has equally commented how there will be no adverse impact on residents of Askenborough given there's a two meter high, high close border fence between the properties. And indeed the chicken coop uh, itself is only one meter square and can only hold a maximum of five chickens. The run itself is nine meters by three meters. That's where Mr. Brand gets his calculations of 720 chickens from. I have a coop of one meter square, I hold five chickens maximum. I have no intention and will accept a restriction on numbers of chickens if desired to five or even three. Slide four, please. The site now attracts a large array of wildlife, birds, bats, bees, and insects, dragonflies, etc., not present previously. And that's due to our efforts to support and provide habitat to the natural environment. LP19, the council are encouraged to support this. Next slide, please. The coach, uh, much has been made of the coach development as a benchmark. This is wholly inappropriate and does not give credence to the very different settings. These are pictures of coats. Bottom left in the red box is the coach development houses. You can see clearly from this picture and the picture top right taken from the eastern side of the picture that coach is very obviously in a very wide and open landscape expanding for miles even beyond these pictures indeed the nearest built-up area behind this development is over four miles to Forney and six miles to Guyern with uninterrupted views this is in very stark contrast to Aston Row which is only 85 meters from commercial premises on one side 100 meters on the other and 250 meters to the rear making that benchmark inappropriate by the planning officer each case should be considered on its own individual setting characteristics next slide please this picture taken on 10th of August um, shows. Next slide, please. Yeah. This picture taken on 10th of August shows the setting of the applicant site in the centre, very clearly different to Coates. To the left, a field owned by number eight is intended use for equestrian. A field to the right, owned by number four, whose use is like the applicant site: trees, orchard, bees, fencing, etc. The field to the bottom is owned by Mega Plants, the garden centre, whose intended use is equestrian. Extremely obvious is the very large developments left and right of this picture. Askham Hospital on the far left with Donington Court Sanctuary Retirement Community adjacent. Then on the right, the picture of Askham Village Community Care Home, both projecting further into the very same setting than the applicant site. Bottom left shows further housing development visible in the setting. One house currently, a second will be built shortly with a further two behind. This presents a clear delineation of the built up area in this setting. This small secluded parcel of land is surrounded by multiple business, a hospital, two care homes, a garden centre, a motocross track and a solar powered farm. This is nothing like the Coates wide open countryside with far reaching views. There is no comparison and the planning assessment has rather considered the site in a generic countryside form, which is incorrect. The green highlighted homes at the top there are the houses which submitted comments in full support of this application as they're very pleased with what we're trying to do not only to protect the site from development, but also to bring wildlife into the area, which we've been very successful in doing. Next slide, please. Uh, I think we've got some good respect to the other members who didn't have any response. I think we've got Fine. Yeah, that, that slide there is just basically some visualisation showing uh, basically Aston Care Home. Um, and the bottom left is, is um, the houses being developed, and to the right is the, the lack of impact. And my last slide is just my summary, which is six yeah. or seven lines. Can I just read that? I don't know. I think we've got to be fair. Can you put the last slide up, please? Um, yeah, I've got two questions, if I may. Um, on the site visit, we um, saw the double gates in the fence. What 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 were the gates for? I've got right of access on ownership of the land across to the public footpath, so that's occasional use to bring in bits and pieces whilst we were doing the land. So if we buy a tree, we get it delivered in there. Um, and the other thing is, why 
have you continued to add what you, you refer to or what's referred to as domestic paraphernalia when you knew that this application was um, up for possible refusal? Not Why aware just of what domestic on? paraphernalia. Other well, than it said, someone said earlier on that um, further, further domestic paraphernalia has been added. So, it was the officers. It was, was the it was Theresa, I think. It, it's a chair, one chair, okay. one seat. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Any more questions for Mr. Crass before we let him go? Can't I see any burning desire to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right. Questions to officers, please. Anybody got any questions for officers? No. No. Okay. No questions for officers. Then we'll move on quickly to debate. So, who would like to kick this debate off? No, we're not. Council. Oh, luckily, Council Sutton has put his hand up. It looks like Thank you, Council Sutton. Please stand by. Thank you, Council. Um, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I, I think officers have got this one right. Um, the applicant can do most of the things that they want to do, uh, the same as the uh, Mr. Pellin can do uh, in an agricultural field. It doesn't, doesn't need to change your use to do lots of those things. Um, with regard to the chickens, I can assure you that there will be rat infestation there. My daughter decided to have some chickens some years ago. And uh, she now doesn't have any because she could not get rid of the rats. Um, I, I own a property um, in the locality, and the tenants asked to keep chickens. And I agreed that they could have them because they said about you know, good things for their children. And then I had to say, I'm sorry, you can't have them because I've got that many complaints from the neighbours um, about the rats, and, and, and they couldn't get rid of them, so they, they had to go. So I think officers got this right. Um, it won't be any great detriment to, um, you know, we've got to be careful. The, the confidential report we had, you know, if they keep it as, as, as agriculture, it won't be great, no great detriment to, you know, those issues because you can still do all those things that were suggested, um, you know, at the back of the field without having to change your use. So I, I think that, you know, Officers got this one right. There is a precedent set um, with inspectors' um, confirmation that it was the right decision in Coates, despite what the uh, the applicant says. Um, we're still talking about agricultural land, uh, um, whether it's you can see miles or whether you can't. That to me is irrelevant. It's agricultural land. So my view is that you know officers got this one right. Um, you know, it, if this goes through, you, you know exactly what's going to happen either side. And uh, I just don't think um, at this stage we should be allowing it. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Councillor Topwood. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm at a loss to as to why they're putting in for a change of use <coughs> because they can keep animals on their on agricultural land. They, they can do what they want with it within reason. And I really don't understand why they're going for a change of use. The only thing I can think of is maybe in the future, either uh, building plots or, you know, that they want to use it as their garden. I mean, they, they can landscape it, they can put a pond in, they can have animals on there, all without change of use. So I'm really at a loss as to why they've actually applied for a change of use. Well, again, we've just got what's in front of us. We've got a vote on what's in front of us. Else is not to reason why. Else is to make a decision on what's in front of us. So, thank you very much for that, Council Top. We're very interesting. Um, still in debate, Council Mayor. Thank you. Well, I'll just say, um, as Council Topwood, the actual application is change of land to domestic purposes. This is not farmland. Mr. Pelling was talking about farmland because he's got the DEFRA license and he will be a farmer if you wish to call it that but this application for mr Kratz is to change the land to domestic garden use it's not farmland so i think you know perhaps is that 
here or here. Well, if it's, if it's agricultural land now and he wants to make it garden land, it's a change of use. Thank you. Just one question on that. If it goes to uh, from agricultural use to normal use, they can't build it. If they've got to come back to us again, they want to build it into the area. So we've got to find out the next one. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Unless we remove permitted development rights. They could, they would have the full permitted development rights on that land that goes with any dwelling. But the other thing is, there's, there's things that could be done that are domestic that don't need planning permission. So you could have tables and chairs, like umbrellas, things that are movable, yeah. washing lines, all that sort of stuff. And I'm not saying they would do, but all those things wouldn't need planning permission. Um, and unless, if, if permission was granted, unless you took permitted development rights off, then yes, they could build um, freestanding buildings in there because they'd have permitted development rights because it, it would be, be land within the curtilage of their dwelling house. That's what it would be, become. Does that clarify? I don't think it does the way you're looking at it, really. Your face tells a thousand stories. Um, but anyway, any more questions to officers before I look for a proposer? No? Right, we're looking We're looking for a proposer on this. Councillor Sutton, thank you. Officer, go with officer recommendation, Chairman. Go with officer recommendation to refuse this application. Uh, we've got a proposer by Councillor Sutton. Anybody, have you got a seconder for your application? For your proposal to go to go with officer recommendation to refuse this application, Councillor Sutton's proposed it. We need a seconder, Councillor Murphy. So just to sum it all up, we've got a proposal and a seconder to go with officer's recommendation to refuse this application. So on those on those uh, terms, can we go and vote on those terms? So anybody wants to raise an arm on that to re, to go with officer recommendation to refuse it. Those against? So that means then that application has been refused. Thank you very much for that. That's a really good debate um, and some good questions answered. So thank you. So I'm really relieved with this tonight. So I'm going to call this panel meeting finish without bringing it to the city. Thank you very much. So I'll leave the bus.